Connecting to the pod. Dude, like... It's, what if that was a character to do? <laughs> if we, like... Like a MS, uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of thing? Like... <laughs> yeah, just the worst kind of shit. Wait, why did the internet turn on Mystery Science Theater this week? Did they this week? There I don't something, know. I mean, some, I, like, I liked it when I was, like, 12. Yeah. And then I realized that there's other stuff out there. But then the problem is if, if anyone ever liked something, then it will never die. That's why you should never like anything. Do you th- That's my lesson to do, you. Thank you. Do you think – okay, so, so two things. One, I think the discourse was, like, film Twitter shit around how Mystery Science Theater disrespected and encouraged a generation of people to disrespect cinema. Like, I, I feel oh, yeah, like that okay. was, like, the essence. Of of the argument, which is so film tight. Twitter like makes film Twitter like makes should make all of us collectively miss Gamergate as like a more quaint kind of time. It, online. If only Gamergaters yeah. had gone for film criticism, like I think that would have exactly. been maybe a more effective call. <laughs> yeah, they had the they had the the zeal. They had the right idea. The right they place. had the right idea. Yeah. It's just the wrong target. Oh, man. That would, that's it. <laughs> Go for the guy with a letterbox account that just only has uncut gems on it. And <laughs> yeah, just keep, keeps <laughs> rewatching it. it and being like, on a rewatch, even better than I wish I could do six stars. <laughs> They've got the Letterboxd <laughs> Pro account, which like as a Letterboxd user, I do not understand the purpose of. I feel like I almost started... I almost thought about getting letterboxed, but whenever I give sincere recommendations, people don't listen to I me. Listen so to I listen to you. Like that, I have to keep them close to my heart. Just, I, I'm, near I'm, and dear. I feel like I'm being erased right now because I actually do take <laughs> your recommendations like reasonably seriously. True. But I feel like still, even if you take them reasonably seriously, you're not like basically my recommendations are the gospel. They shouldn't right. just be okay, like, received it. as recommendations. They shouldn't just be sort of into received. a pool of recommendations. They should be the the, the one true word yeah, of like recommendation. A, like a tablet. I'm Moses carrying the tablet. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember that story, to be honest. Dude, but, what the, you know, this is, we are, deep in, we are deep in your territory here, and you're, and you're letting me down, which is quite disappointing. <laughs> Well, it's uh, whatever day it is. What's the week? I mean, who knows? <laughs> yeah, so this is nothing's I, going I, on. We, we talked about this a little bit before we started recording. This episode felt like our opportunity to like be really professional, and you blew it by oh, opening yeah, up right. with a I robot forgot. sound like, and like. There's no. That was. <laughs> this is our audition, dude. <laughs> this is our audition tape to get into Capital R <laughs> Radio. And so, um, I feel like, I mean, how do we do I, well, it? Well, I think it, it, it starts by just like being a little more professional. Okay. Um, and then I think we probably need to like, not, I, I got to stop using filler words. We have to stop swearing. We probably can't talk about jism as much. I feel like, is that, <laughs> I feel like if you say jism, it might is, be okay. Is jism, is jism scientific? <laughs> <laughs> Like, what's the most scientific way to talk about jism? No, don't go down there. I feel like even <laughs> even though... Okay, I'm trying to find, like, NPR background music. I keep searching, like, what's NPR background music? I search who makes it. Every time I Google it right now while you talk about jism, it just comes up with these NPR think pieces, like, moving background music to the forefront. <laughs> and it's like, you know, just like little, like, NPR That's articles, why, see, like this a, is why we're like not nice going to be on NPR read. ever. is because, like, <laughs> we, we don't have... We don't have the right mindset is the problem. I feel like the NPR, in my mind, it's always like a, you know... Uh, it's always vibes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like vibe, vibey vibes, but like up-tempo vibey vibes. If you can look up vibey yeah, vibes, maybe. <laughs> and it, Every movie used to be uh, like that kind of... Sh- every Mumblecore movie would have like vibes in the background. Like the Duplass sound mm. used to just be like vibes in the background, but now every movie is like they've discovered free jazz drumming only. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so like the scene where the I mean I don't even know what happens in these fucking movies. No one knows, but it's always like this kind of shit in the background, like yeah. like just walking down the hallway. <laughs> Dude, I legitimately feel like I'm having like a, a, a just a frazzled day in New York City, which is You're just like sweating. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm sweating, and I feel like wherever I am, it's also a character. That's what this that's what this music makes me feel. <laughs> oh, film! What a terrible art form that is. What do you think the actual? What we? do you think the actual worst art form is? 
the not, worst not art which art form, form has the worst critics, which we know is television. Mm-hmm. Um, that's who should be gamer gated. But which which art form is just like you know could have tried harder? Did I already talk about this on the pod? But I, I, maybe not. But like I still have like things like AV Club. I still use an RS an RSS feed for work. Do you and I still have shit like, like AV? Do you have like a like a an application that you use because for me yeah, there's like Google some would, bespoke website wow. that still makes when it Google like for the shut down that was the end and then i think i tried to use feedly for a while but it's like it wasn't the that's same. what i use yeah that's what i use um <laughs> like honestly i don't even know if this is the one i made fun of actually but here's just trying to search the one that i made fun of i just found this but the, popping into my feedly feed was a mr robot review i don't even think this is the one but this one uh, alone, like there's an this AV Club review of Mr. R- Mr. Robot, as I call it, of the finale <laughs> opens with like a lengthy Tolstoy quote. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> that's like a, that's like two like, pages of Tolstoy. And then the, the actual writer themselves opens with, "I am not who I am." Semicolon. I am who I am not. It's the primary oh condition of humanity God. from philosophies, biblical to psychoanalytical. Like these the TV critics, we just stopped talking about them. But they've now that they're being unwatched, they've fucking gone all the way up their asses multiple times. I'm so- they're Ouroboros of sphincter. <laughs> Uh, they're like a, a one person human centipede with themselves. <laughs> right. Sorry, this is a review of the finale of season four of Mr. Robot. They've made four seasons of this of the of the <laughs> yeah. hacker show. That's yeah. Oh, yeah, fucking insane. That's not right. <laughs> so maybe the worst art form is the art of television criticism. Oh. Uh, I think another of the worst art forms is definitely web Sorry. comics. We've talked about that before. Sorry, did you just... I just want to, like, we didn't before... Like, you and I weren't talking about Mr. Robot before we started recording. You just had that thing in your quiver, ready to go. <laughs> I just just, a, just a, a, an AV club review of Mr. Robot that you hate. Well, I guess that's, it's because there's the two polarities, right? It's like the person doing the letterbox thing where they're just talking about like the most fucking entry level movies, like saying, like, I, I can only ima- imagine like looking up Casablanca on letterbox, all, kind, all the kind of shit you'd have to read. So there's that sort of entry level. You know what, level. though? Sometimes I do find like, so admittedly, yes, there's a certain type of letterbox review that is like what you're describing, but I, I, I don't mind the people who use it for like bad joke opportunities. Oh, and for I, sure. Cause I will I mean, say this like recently I, I, I boxed or yeah, what do you call when you log something in letterboxed? Anyway, I watched, I watched Chinatown <laughs> I and, and one of the top reviews is just like, forget it, Joker. It's a society, which like still is in my head now. And when I think about <laughs> Chinatown, I think about that joke, which is like <laughs> troublesome for me mentally. <laughs> Um, That's not, I so guess, an argument that, in favor of, of Letterboxd. There's that it? polarity of, like, Letterboxd ass people, but then on the other side, there's, like, people who quote Tolstoy to yeah. review Mr. Robot Season 4. So I don't know where it fits. Like, I don't know what kind of criticism is good other than specifically the things that I publish online, Dude, I guess, the, is what I'm It's saying. crazy that you are the only good critic. <laughs> it's true. I'm the only one with the correct opinion. Is there is um, there anyone... Uh, is there any critic that you look up to, Josiah, who you think, like, they're, they're your sort of, like, um, you know, your lodestar? My, my uh, home star runner? Yeah, that's say? what I said, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There used to be, but then, like, then it became that all the media people became, like, the Twitter celebs, and then they all became insufferable. So the people whose writing I used to really enjoy, I would just think about their bad tweets, and then it would ruin <laughs> it for me. You know? <laughs> so it's kind of, it's kind of tough. Uh, there's a couple though. I guess the other thing that ruined it was like going to Sundance so many years in a row, and then like hearing the critics sort of loudly because they're all American, like loudly project their opinions about the movies to one another, like during the closing credits. Like they would just like basically do their review out loud immediately, and they were all so stupid. <laughs> um, so that was pretty difficult. I think Richard Iowati is maybe my favorite film critic. The uh, the guy from the IT crowd. Ooh. I I just actually oh, recommended you, you it to you. Yeah, sorry. And on Twitter, I read his book. Book I two. finished it. I'm I read now. It's the thing Montreal I do. Montreal fucked you up, man. Um, Montreal. I thought you were going to get into like, you know, speed, and instead you started <laughs> reading more books, which was unexpected. <laughs> it's true. Um, but yeah, he's he's amazing. He's so good, and like he's such a good writer that 
I have to like look up multiple words on every page because I'm too stupid. This to know. is that's this is like, good NPR content, you know, like that's, talking see? about books, yeah. <laughs> talking about learning. It's true. I feel like on NPR they don't say I'm too <laughs> fucking dumb to know. I had to look up the. Can words. you imagine how much more popular public radio would be in any country? Like, forget just NPR, CBC, BBC, whatever the like weird upside down Australian version is. If it was just people being like, this book I suspect was good. However, I was very <laughs> confused and usually sleepy when I was trying to finish it. But <laughs> that's so truthful. Yeah, though. like and I just feel like then you you'd broaden, you know, your spectrum from just sort of like, you know, both intellectuals and want to be intellectuals to just and and the the true public who know that words are hard and make you stupid. And that maybe that's where the humble podcaster comes in because it's uh, yeah, exactly it's, it's for idiots. But you always feel like you learn one thing after listening for three hours, and you can have something to bring up in conversation with people and share some factoid. But I want to know what you think is the worst art form. Hmm, well, I was going to say, speaking of learning things, I just popped uh, the cap on a new kombucha. <laughs> a word that wow. I know how to pronounce. This is amazing. Now of, it's a true weekly thing for you. At oh, least. dude, I'm, the, the I'm crushing. I'm, I, I, as an attempt to wean myself off of just like other bad habits, um, I'm drinking like about a kombucha a day, Cam, a kombucha <laughs> a day. Which, like, kombucha. I hope that's okay. I don't tell me if it's not. That's no. That's also what I'm okay. doing. Too. Great. Okay, okay, good. Um, so you, but I didn't know. Like smooth interior, baby. That's what I've got. What I like. What I really like is knowing that you almost shot yourself at the grocery store and you kept going. Like I feel like that right there is my. Influence. I was walking back. Just, like, just, no, I was on your... Niagara Street, which is near Bloor What's Street, that? near the CN Tower. <laughs> okay, looking at alleys, right. man. It was. It was tense. It was. I wish if I was in a grocery <laughs> store, I would have like, you know, <laughs> looked for an aisle with. Uh, you know, the burrito box for me to duke in or something. <laughs> so what's the worst what art form? What is the worst form? art form? I kind of think paintings, <laughs> you know, because like, eh. yeah. I mean, a big painting, you know, we went and saw the early Rubens, at the AGO, and like, those are sick. And I was like, maybe I love paintings. And then we went and looked at some other paintings, didn't care for them. So are you ta- are you the kind of guy who's like sees a painting of some lines and you're like ah oh, I could do that that's no good or are you talking because I I, I kind of like, like the ones, lines I, ones like that's it. I like the dumb <laughs> stuff like too. like Ashley and I recently went to the the AGO and like there's all these like stoop like really fucking stupid like pieces of modern art that are just like a, a, a walker hanging from a coat hanger in an empty room that's painted white I was like this yeah. fucking rocks. And all the plaques say that it challenges your perception of yeah, space. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, I feel challenged <laughs> space-wise. My, yeah, what is space, really? Yeah. You know? But yeah, I, I agree. Because I hate when I go see some paintings and it's just like guys in wigs. Yeah. Like in those curly wigs, like hunting for foxes or whatever. I'm like, get the fuck. Give me some lines That's already, what, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? Exactly. I'm, I, I love the lines. I don't care about the foxes. Um, so good paintings are the worst art form. I could get behind yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel, man. Fuck a good painting. Well, the best art form is uh, Japanese B-sides, <laughs> oh. like the one called Out of My Head. Perfect. Leave a light in your bedroom. Phone is tumbled down the hall. Got nowhere left to go to. I guess I shouldn't go anywhere at all. I get so <laughs> afraid. Like, periodically, I'm like, okay, this seems like a good time to, to make the transition. But I'm so worried that you've come up with something... You know, but I want to be like, Josiah, you're truly out of my head. Wait, you know, and, and then you'll be like, oh, I had a whole thing that was like, I was going to be, oh, oot, oh, me, I. <laughs> I know. Head planet Earth. I feel like whenever I, whenever I do a good one, then I just feel like I can coast for <laughs> right. a year or so. Okay. What was the last <laughs> you one know? you thought was good? Uh, I, mean, I don't know. It's, it feel like maybe that's a fresh memory for you. And I don't know that it's earned. Also, like someone who listens to the pod set, accidentally sent me something that was intended for someone else. Like it wasn't like scandals Ooh. or anything, but it was just like it, he was. It, it was Tony Hartman who appeared on one of the exclusives, the marketing exclusive. So shout out to him. Um, and he sent me like a picture of like a man in a nice, tight, slim fitting suit, and was like FYI. And I was like. I just liked it because I just assumed that it was something from the pod like, that right. I didn't remember, and so I just liked it. But he's like, that was for my brother, by the way. <laughs> that was an accident. I'm like, I honestly have no clue. Like, I could have said something about a tight-fitting blue oh, suit totally, 15 yeah. minutes ago, and I would have no fucking idea. There, the, 
lately, some of the stuff that has been sort of coming back to us from like, you know, in particular, obviously like the sort of no context or like people just doing quotes, but like, I'm really worried about some of the stuff that I've said over the last couple of weeks. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I assure you, I meant none of it. If any of it was bad, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, um, you know, I think, I think I'm really like back, like I'm, I'm really, I mean, I've been enjoying, like, not that I haven't been, but like, uh, you know, I, I, I feel a bit of a, <laughs> wait, what are you even trying listen, to say Listen, what I right was now? trying to say is that I've been, <laughs> like, I have like a, a bit of like classic, <laughs> you know, the break, I have a bit of like classic pod energy right now where I'm like not mm-hmm. thinking about the fact that people are listening or, or like being worried about, you know, possibly, you know, fucking up and ruining my career prospects. Uh, and and that is probably, you know, it's good for my personal enjoyment. I don't know if anything that I could possibly do would be good for the pod. Uh, but then when people sort of parrot things back to me that make me sound like an alt-right figurehead, I'm, I'm quite concerned, you know? <laughs> Why? That's great for your career. <laughs> it's, it, it's true. I just finished that book, Antisocial, and it feels like maybe it's a tack that we should... Um, I think you talked about reading yeah, that book. I think but I'm done now. I'm saying I've done it, and swinging. I'm officially convinced by the end nothing bad happened to any of the people that it was about. We're swinging bookmarks too much Sorry. lately, I think. It's a, it's a bookmark measuring contest. So I don't like it. song out of my head by the band Blink-182. Josiah, how do you feel about this? I'm not going first. I'm not oh, going okay. first. Because this, and I noticed last week, your switch was so fast. You, I, like, immediately had cold feet about the song and then immediately switched. So I feel like I want to hear your full opinion okay. immediately so, right so now. So I've listened to the song. Lock it, lock it in. I want oh, you to, okay, I'm gonna I lock want it to in. officially lock it in. <laughs> well, here's – you're going to hate this. The song is fine. <laughs> so I'm locking <laughs> in just right down the center. God damn it. I know. I'm picking both uh, Elizabeth Warren and Amy <laughs> Klobuchar for, for – <laughs> For, for the pod, have we made any? Have you done any? Like, definitely, definitely going to need to remember that name because she's going places. <laughs> yeah, it's true for sure. Yeah. Sub four percent is going to blow through the roof now that the Times is doing like the decision. I noticed on yeah, I was looking at ABC and I noticed that someone named Other is polling at the top. <laughs> but I don't know who it is. It's kind of weird. Oh, that's interesting. Did you make any good? Like, you know, did the pod endorse like Mark and Tom or something? You know, did you? No, I didn't think to do that. People actually. should know that we're recording this um, the day after this happened. Like, I know it's already a sp- right. It's going to come out like six yeah, months. Yeah, this is from like now. a spent joke already. The world will be gone yeah. by now. So, listen, I'm I'm picking the mushy middle here, which is when this song came out. Like, I remember you messaged me and you were like, "Okay, we're up to one se- Is this song technically, I guess, one seventy six now? Like in the I don't fucking right, know okay. who the, who knows. A, like, imagine keeping track I, of this. Shit. I certainly. Um, I, I don't want to. Ooh, I got something to actually mention in terms of keeping track of it, which I'm going to forget. Um, but the first <laughs> Wait, time, what? no, well, I'll get into it. I, 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 that was a way of reminding myself, um, like planting a flag or whatever. <laughs> Is this an off mic? No, thing I think it's an on mic thing. But it's like I don't I don't want to get into wow. it yet. Wow. Um, so I listened to the song when it came out when you sent it to me. I was like, ah, oh, it's fine. I didn't think about it. I also noticed. I think the day that this came out and I sent it to you was the last time we updated the spreadsheet, and we felt so proud of oh, ourselves yeah, for doing so all much the work. New, and, all the and then now, yeah, like, it's so confusing. We're definitely going to do a song twice now <laughs> yeah. because we have not changed it since yeah. then. So, so our attempt at sort of getting our life together didn't go great. Um, I thought the song was like fine. I didn't really think about it, and then I listened to it before I did this week's uh, guest interview, and was like, oh, this song's. Maybe only okay. And then I listened to it right before we started recording, and I was like, wait, is this song good? Like, there's a cool riff in it. Um, I think I, you know, I also had the Genius page open, and so I saw that this song is, like, I think just credited to Mark and Matt, and I think that clouded the way I was listening to it, which is to say, like, I really wanted to like it. Like, I wanted my narrative with the song to be like, here's what happens when the boys go back to basics and trust their instincts. And in the end, it's like, only okay. Like, I, I I, think the song is, like, maybe good, but I also know that I will never listen to it again. I'm never... this. The, the 20 minutes ago was the last time I listened to this song. And, like, yeah, this was really damning Very it with faint praise. Is that interesting? <laughs> um, I do think that because there were elements that it felt like on, like, the sort of, like, most recent listen that popped out more for me of, like, liking a couple of the hooks, liking some of the guitar parts, is... When we get it, I don't know how many covers of this there are, that this could be a song that deconstructed in different ways, I will then end up loving. And that's how I'm, so I, unfortunately I'm, I'm 
<laughs> so when you ask Sam to lock it in, he does an entire episode. Yeah, I'm locking song. in my Just arc kidding. is what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> I can't lock Amazing. in a song I'm this unfamiliar with. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that, Josiah. Well, I remember. So for this, this song for me is I remember being a Japanese teen when this came out, <laughs> and my <laughs> Japanese mom yeah. said I wasn't allowed to listen to it. But I went down to the Japanese mall anyways, and I bought the Japanese version of Blink One Eight Two's Nine, and this was, of course, the the famous bonus track. Damn! What and, an uh, iconic moment rest. for you as a teenager growing up in teenage Japan. <laughs> Is what I'm saying racist? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it, it, but maybe. I think it's... You never know. You know, it's one of those things where it's not, but it feels like it is. Like, saying saying just (laughs) Japanese that much as, like, a modifier, (laughs) it feels bad. It feels bad the way saying, and I think we've talked about this before in the pod, the way saying Jews feels bad sometimes, you know? Especially the way you say it. Well, yeah, I've got a term, man. man. Calm down. It's the initials. (laughs) Uh, Well... I mean, I'm going to also plant a little thing. I mean, let's do some foreshadowing because this is good radio no, that's, that we're yeah, doing. Let's, like, let's tell a story to our listeners. <laughs> what a, and what a story. It's a story about moms and malls and censorship. Thank you for tuning in to Blink-155. <laughs> Yo, that's good, man. I don't, think, cause you, I don't think you've ever really tried to do like a, like a corny radio voice. Like I feel like you've... I don't think I have a good... I, think I, I bet have, you like, do. A, I have, like, an idiot teen voice. Me, like, I'm always going to sound like a teen. Give me your opinion of this song as if, <clears throat> like, okay, Josiah, um, I'm sorry, this is last minute. Uh, I'm a producer on CBC's Q, and the new Blink uh, <laughs> Japanese bonus track just came out today. Uh, no one on the panel is really comfortable talking about it because they're all cinephiles and TV reviewers. So we're going to call you in. <laughs> you know, Tom's going to talk to you for a minute. And, uh, and, and if you could just sort of offer us okay. some thoughts. And, you know, I, have, I will happily do it, yes. Sam. No problem. Yeah. I'm but not saying, by the way, I'm the say, producer. I'm like, it's an imaginary. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you're not, you're, so you're just a producer. Well, either way, I mean, you sound an awful, you sound and look an awful lot like Sam Sutherland. <laughs> okay. And hearing it's that Toronto. you're a producer on the show Q and you have so much, you're a higher up on Q, I, I just want to, before we get started, I just want to know, how much did you know about you? <laughs> <laughs> I I honestly hope <laughs> that the day comes when you are invited onto Q and you ask <laughs> the person who calls you that question. I really, really do. Look, I appreciate the invite, but I just want to know how did you get such a higher up job? What kind of shit are yeah, you coming Yeah, 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 exactly. Because we're, we're, yeah. it's the people like you that are making shit happen. You know what no, I mean? No, it's true. This is, uh, you know what? I love that even in this... You know, make believe scenario. You're still holding power to account, Josiah, and that's and that's why you're the punk one. <laughs> okay, let me try that. I feel like you got to get closer to the mic. Yeah, 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 for sure. What's my age again? It's a classic question of of the ages, so to speak, actually. And Blink One Two has been asking this question for quite some time. Um, some of those themes are definitely present here. They're painting with a similar brush, but I do think that Out of My Head sees the band kind of expanding sonically, um, sort of referencing modern alternative radio pop while also clinging to a little piece of the past. It's hard. No, that was just good. like not saying the word like. You, you is know hard. what I thought you did that was really good was you started off slow, like to, to sort of grab people's interest, and then you immediately sped up, which is not a, a verbal tick that I think I was previously aware of, but that's definitely something that is like very professional radio. Be like, what is my age again? Blink Ready <laughs> 2 have been asking this question ever since they formed in San Diego, California in the early 1990s. And since then, they've gone on to tour countless countries played many festivals like the way that you adjust your like yeah that you yeah. were doing that which was good I, you know what honestly you're That's, hired josiah <laughs> thank you you but could honestly, co-host blink 155 i would not like to work for someone like you you piece of shit <laughs> wow wow again <laughs> just like you know keeping it maybe too real keeping it 100 mm. as they mm-hmm. say uh i think this song is really sick actually and uh, like i said i'm going to plant a flag for later i've spent a lot of time with yeah, this song yeah yeah i gather kind of lived with this one a little bit more i've lived with it you're going to find out why later yeah, on yeah cuz i don't know I, why in, i mean you literally do, do you've I? downloaded the no, asset no but i don't know why I no, no no i can I've, I've downloaded the assets i'm aware of the existence of the asset but i have no idea why you created <laughs> the asset 
fuck is going on? <laughs> it made me feel like this I was a in like a, a fucking, uh, 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 what's his name? You know, oh my God, <laughs> Harrison Ford, <laughs> and now he's off his gym. <laughs> You know, the Tom Clancy guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack Reacher. I've never seen <laughs> yeah, it. Um, <laughs> basically, what we're learning is that we would rather be doing anything <laughs> except another episode of like, we're going to be right now. But, like, just, like, referring to anything as an asset. Like, I've started referring to every single thing as just a project to, a, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this this project. that Like, if it's the podcast, if it's a film, if it's whatever, I like that as a catch-all word. But the asset, the asset. Ooh. I think you're again shifting the definition. I think an asset is a part of a project. No, I get it. Know? I get it. But I'm saying I would. I I, I never use that. You want to start calling everything and, an yeah, asset? So like after we're done recording, I'll export and send you the assets. Um, you you <laughs> let me really know when you've secured the assets. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna definitely get on a no fly list if we keep talking <laughs> like this. It's I think. True, yeah. If not already, um, no, I don't know. I think that this song is like really. First of all, the production is like. Insane. This production is ridiculous. It's like the most Imagine Dragons that you get out of nine, I think. And the weird thing is, I guess it's probably because the genius notes are not up to date, like a fan wrote them, but it doesn't say who produced it. And this one sounds the most like a like Michael Bay pop song. Like just so it sounds like Transformers or whatever. I don't know. I feel like I say all the same things every time, but it's just plug in those same things again. <laughs> yeah, we need like a. We joked about the the soundboard, which uh, you know, it's is a troubling reminder of our verbal tics. But I think it'd be even better if the soundboard had like those full sentences. And so, like, as opposed <laughs> to just being like sick, 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 it could actually just <laughs> create the whole pod. episode with AI. Yeah. Um, and then we would finally get written up on some blogs. I, I think, think. So. that would that would be would be on Boing Boing <laughs> or whatever. I mean, I love Boing Boing. I love I, I love just, Boing Boing back in the day. Doesn't it all just make sense that I still read an RSS feeder that I think I would be so validated if I saw my own name <laughs> pop up boing, there? Boing Boing, they're just like honestly, even your ability to reference like. <laughs> seemingly very specific aspects of like 2009 <laughs> pop culture. I just want to be big on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> like, the RSS feed explains everything. It really does. <laughs> oh Lord! So, what was the production? It? Is what the I'm saying. Is crazy, the production but is, is that ridiculous. The thing that, so what? What? What for you? That's the thing keeping me away. Okay. The thing bringing me in is that it just has this peppy little bounce to it. The bass is interesting, and I really do like the chorus. I, I think the chorus is really cool, and it's just like a really fun pop song, more than any of the other songs on Nine. And I get probably halfway through, they're like, oh, Nine has to be on some emo shit, so to speak. So they wanted to make it all sad and heavy, but I don't know. I think this song would have been a great single, but it also probably would have pissed people off just as much as... Blame it, blame it on my youth. So do you know why this song was, like, what the history of it is? Why it was jettisoned? Because, like, to me, again, for all those sort of middle-of-the-road feelings I have towards the song, I think it's better than some of the other shit that's on the album. I don't know that it's blame it, blame it good, but... <laughs> like, that song <laughs> you know rocks. Know that song's an immediate blame, hit. Blame, blame, it, blame, 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 blame. Make an ass out of that I, one. Uh, yeah, do that. I I finally uh, because we did the TikTok exclusive last week. Um, everyone check that out. patreoncom slash blink one fifty five, which is actually where we are doing real radio. That's the real, mm, um, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Real this is, quality. This is where we fuck around, but like as if we would make people pay for this. <laughs> this is more like Gorilla Radio. Turn that sh up. <laughs> <laughs> the classic Tony is there Hawk. A Rage edit? Against the Machine pod. Yo. There must be. It's definitely called Rage yeah, Against called, the Pod, right? It's called Chapo Trap House. Oh. <laughs> Is that a dig? I don't mean. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't. I, don't so. I, I think implying that the politics of Chapo Trap House are. Um, I mean, I guess it's rude to imply that the politics of Rage Against the Machine are sort of fairly simple, but. Um, I've decided this this week to pl- to fidget with a. Uh, with a measuring tape that's oh, on the desk cool. here. So it's a really nice, annoying sound. Mm, we're trying to Pretty look cool. up pod, like pod against the machine or rage against the pod. I'm just getting a <laughs> lot of POD rage against the machine content. Oh, yeah. Actually, John from Blocked Party, um, another show that I was on because I'm really I'm, I'm rounding the bases, so to speak. But he has a he has a new metal pod. Oh, actually. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it good? 
I've never listened to it, but I, I feel like it, it's probably not. I'm thinking like, is there like a sincere poli sci 101 oh, analysis yeah. of RATM? Yeah, because I don't want to hear you, know? you and I talk about rage and be like, you know, people who were yeah, in like forces giggling didn't burn about crosses, it. though. Yeah, I want to hear like some guy who still wears a Che shirt, unironically. <laughs> Yeah, a couple a couple know? of Che's would be great. No, it looks like when you look up Rage Against Machine, you got Michael Che. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> cannot wait to listen to that podcast. Is there like a gas leak in my house right now? Like, what's going on? I'm so confused. I think I'm trying to talk about the production. Oh, you said why is it jettisoned? That was a good word. Thanks, man. I'm <laughs> auditioning right now. I have no idea why. I mean, there's no information about this song whatsoever. It makes no sense. Um, I guess like. I think I read once that Japanese bonus tracks are because the CDs are so popular there still, and so it's a good incentive was, and a good way to make extra cash. But I don't know. And it does actually also seem like they often put very interesting things, like the Vampire Weekend Father of the Bride, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> to bring it back to the greatest hardcore oh. band of all time. That, that CD, one of their ja- there was a couple Japanese bonus tracks, and one of them was Jude Law doing spoken word <laughs> over an instrumental I mean, that from the album. that is actually kind of sick. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so, I, I don't know. Like, it's not like they put bullshit on there. They do save something good for it. And then do they just know that it's going to, like, leak over yeah, here? There must be some assumption. Uh, so, spoiler alert, this, we talked about this a little bit with uh, with this guest. I'm not going to say their name. Uh, but they didn't want to commit to this as, like... Zach DeLaRocca. It is, of course. Um <laughs> Uh, they didn't want to commit to like this being a fact, but they their understanding was that it had something potentially to do with like import laws in Japan, and that like you actually needed something that was exclusive to the Japanese market in order to maybe not be an imp- like in order to actually get like a proper domestic release in Japan. Oh, I um, see. Or but but it could also have to do with yeah, it's like that's the reason to sort of which, which sort of scans like when you just think about you know whatever how tariffs work. <laughs> so, so who knows? But do you remember at all? Like, were there any bands like from back in the day when we first got file sharing, and like you could get the Japanese bonus track from a record that you remember like being stoked? Because I just, I remember there was I think Splash Turn and Twist was like the Bleed American Jimmy World Japanese bonus track that was like so fucking good. Oh yeah. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's not. I don't Jude remember. Law. I don't remember anything. No? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember fucking you just anything. Woke up that's ever and happened only in my listened life. to like cool hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I don't know. I have no clue. I don't remember like knowing about a bonus track and being excited to get it. It's just not something that computes in my brain. Yeah, that's. Um, I do think. I mean, rarities obviously were cool, or like having like a rare EP, like Interstate Eight by Modest Mouse, was like my big grip that I had. Um, and then I lent it to my friend Nathan, who I f- really should talk about more on here, or I should have a pod just about Nathan, but I lent it to him, um, and it was like worth so much because it was so rare, and then his CD player got stolen from his car, <laughs> so I lost it. Oh. Thanks, Nathan. Nathan. Um, yeah. But no, I don't know. I can't think of, like, I just feel like only very recently was I aware of Japanese bonus tracks. I think maybe you too. On, but then they would release them on their like greatest hits compilations. Yeah, maybe that's the thing too. It's like an investment for later on. You're like now right. when Blink does their their next greatest hits, they have like another Man Overboard type thing that they can throw on there. Yeah, and then the, you actually have something like good for for your sort of the one new song on your the your the headline news for your for your greatest <laughs> hits collection. You know, I don't think it counts as like a B side, but I really do. Th- I really do strongly believe that the greatest no effect song is "We Threw Gasoline on the Fire." I think that's like the, really? absolutely the best no effect. And that's song. just on yeah, a, that's just on a so punkorama, right? Is that not sick. on any record? I don't think it's on anything else. Maybe like one of their rarities comps as well, or whatever. I don't know. Rarities are kind of cool though. Like I, I really do appreciate a good rarity. Um, and I think also why I've spent time with this is because. And for all the shit I talk, being pretentious is a wonderful thing. And for you to be able to say the best song on Nine is the Japanese B side, oh, that's like a sick vibe to have. Like you should embrace that, and it also is almost true. So you may as well go all the way with but it. I so I, I've been thinking about this a lot recently with like um, bonus editions or like whatever the deluxe edition of every record that comes out at the same time with the two bonus tracks. But that like 
that distinction that you've just described that allows for like a little bit of a like kind of in group thing and a bit of pretension that is often like warranted because it means you had to like work harder and 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 you might hear like a really good song that you wouldn't have otherwise but for the most part when bonus tracks are packaged in with a deluxe edition of a record that might have been sold in two different ways in stores or packaged two different ways on iTunes now that two versions of the of the album go up on Apple Music or Spotify or whatever the same day and sort of like collapse the notion of it, of, of anything being special or being like only for, you know, I mean, as much as it is like ripping off your more hardcore fans to be like, you got to spend five more dollars and you get like a gatefold plus two other songs. Like it, it, to me, it actually is uh, in, in, in keeping with the conversations that we've been having for the last maybe two weeks around like the value of gatekeeping, like it allowed for fan gatekeepers inside of communities to say like, the, we are the hardcore ones. Our identity is infinitely more attached to this band, and like that has value in terms of creating a, a, a community that 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 really cares about the same thing. And that like truly doesn't exist anymore because everything just ends up on streaming, and you don't have to invest any more money in it, right? Yeah, that's so true. I, but then it makes me question like that's a kind of a picturesque, idealist way to look at it. But do you really think Blink One Eight Two was like? Oh, this song's actually sick, so we're going to withhold it from America. No. And only have it so our fans can find it. Like, I think, again, it's just kind of them making a mistake. Because, like, even you agree that it's better than a bunch of the albums. Yeah, it seems... And it, it would seems, fit really good. Like, it, f- it feels like a single to yeah, me. Yeah, I totally agree. It's just more like, a, you know, again, the bonus track thing. Like, I was thinking about it recently. Like, I'm looking at, you know, I have this, like, big Bruce Springsteen box set that, like, I, I, I remember getting really into Springsteen and then like reading a bunch of books about Springsteen and like reading all about these like various alternate versions of a lot of the really big songs, like, you know, especially from the like, you know, born in the USA era of like, no, there were actually like all these like cool, weird, small four track versions of these songs. I'd be like, Oh my God. And like Ashley got me this box set for like my, my birthday at the peak of me, like really like wanting to just sort of hoover up all of this information and being like, this is so sick. And I own this thing now and I can hear all these things that I've only read about. And then like recently I was like, I wonder if this is just on Apple music. And like, of course it is. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> right. And like, ultimately, obviously I think that that is for the better, but like I think about the connection that that created for me with, like, I, I, like, it's dumb because we're talking about, like, the most popular, one of the most popular artists of all time. But, like, the connection that it made me feel to, like, serious Springsteen fandom to have invested all this time and then to have, like, got this thing as a gift and, like, feeling like I understood something in a, in a slightly more intimate way. Just being, like, if I had just read those books and then gone on Apple and, like, put that music on in the background, I'd be like, okay, cool, and then never fucking thought about it again. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Everything is online no matter what, but this narrative surrounding this music makes it more interesting yeah. to seek it out. And so, like, this is cool. Kind of, it actually, it actually, actually cool. makes me – it makes me think of, like, Grateful Dead – not that I know anything about it, really, but I, I like the idea of people having this, like, narrative surrounding this specific show yeah. in this specific city, and then, like, they build up all this hype around it, whereas someone like me puts on, like, okay, it sounds exactly the same as all the other fucking Grateful Dead. Um, but so it's kind of in that sense, too. It's like everything's online, but it's just kind of an interesting way to discover it. And so is this song um, not on... Because the only version of it I could find was, like, kind of okay YouTube rips. Is this on Apple Music? I don't think so. Yeah, I think so this is when really I was googling it, gate kept. It seems like there's there's a at least a link to a, a Spotify listing for mm. it, the Japanese um, bonus track. But I don't know if it plays or not because I'm an Apple Music man myself mm-hmm. because I want that sweet sweet time crisis, um, which is the greatest show. Is of that all is time. that is that Other why you, like you do Apple Music? Is because of yeah, it is. Get. I fucking I can't get enough of Time Crisis. It's the greatest show ever. Um, seriously, anyone who listens to Blink One Fifty Five would love Time Crisis. Truly, would they? you would. Would I? <laughs> I guess I don't. You I don't guys, listen to the pod. You would literally. You would fucking love Time Crisis. Mm, you okay. would. But instead, everyone should listen to Blink One Fifty Five. Yeah. Remember, we got whole other episodes. You got to pay for it too. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So there, someone has transcribed these lyrics. Uh, they're not official or anything, but we may as well take a quick look at them. They're not even that bad to me. Like, they're mostly not that <laughs> they're bad. They're not even that bad. <laughs> Leave a light in your bedroom for when I stumble down the hall. Got nowhere left to go to. Guess I shouldn't go anywhere at all. I mean, that's, like, generic, but it's not terrible. I'm not that I'm mad, not mad about no. it. 
And I hear what you're saying, but I still keep banging away, left a note on my windshield, saying that you shouldn't have to waste another day of my life. Okay, that pre-chorus bit where it goes half time with the with like the toms and the bass is so fucking sick to me. I love it. Um Get me out of my head, empty, left for dead. Don't make this so complicated. There's no point in a conversation. I don't know. Like, what's this? Is a good song. Well, and I, I, so it good. contains obviously a reference to Chris Callahan's Left for Dead, uh, which is right. so that's cool. So it is like tip of the hat to classic, <laughs> classic Southern Ontario hardcore. <laughs> that's true. That is true. I was thinking too, like the out of my head thing. It fits because it's catchy, and that's probably not something that they. Intended, but I do have this song stuck in my head. I, actually, unfortunately, right now, though, like lot. I don't. And when I hear the out of my head melodic space in my brain is completely owned by Fastball, which is <laughs> an infinitely better out of my head. Unfortunately, what happened to Fastball? Well, now they got all that uh, Machine Gun Kelly money because oh. he he did this the the song that sampled that, which I don't know if it was popular, but I definitely heard it on the radio once and was like. What? I know I've talked about this on the pod before. Machine Gun Kelly also, it's worth noting, may as well, since you've just perfectly set up the I said the magic I, word. Normally I wouldn't, but I may as well mention that he is making a pop punk album with Travis Barker. Yeah. Apparently. Well, you got to mention it. Um, so that's very interesting you know, to me. While we're talking about <laughs> cinema, uh, Fastball's uh, Out of My Head was featured in the film Coyote Ugly. <laughs> right. Boy, Coyote Ugly, that's such a rude name. You'd think that the movie was written by the Roadrunner. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. Yo, Coyote Ugly is 20 years old. That was good. That was so it, it good. Was, that I was, it was. This was a Coyote Ugly podcast. You don't get that shit on NPR, okay? <laughs> that's only, you only get that here. That's true. <laughs> you know the director of Coyote Ugly grew up in your adopted hometown of Montreal? I did not. That's why I moved here. Wow. I wonder if he lived there when he made <laughs> Kangaroo Jack. Did you know that the failed film Doolittle, uh, currently in, in cinemas everywhere. Is it already everywhere. failed? Probably not actually in cinemas anymore. Maybe it is. Yeah, it's like the... It, they were, I the was Robert Downey Jr. Lose at, Dr. Doolittle. It's going to lose at least tens of millions really? of d- dollars or maybe more. Yeah, everyone fucking hates it. Um, but the guy who wrote and directed it also wrote this movie called Havoc. With um, Anne Hathaway in it, and it's like honestly the greatest movie I've ever seen. I think it's from two thousand three or something, um, and it's about like rich kids in L.A. who sort of try to be thugs, like they act like thugs, even though they all live in Beverly Hills. And uh, there's like multiple scenes where Anne Hathaway like raps Tupac songs and says like the N word and wow. stuff. It's so fucked up. It's like seriously so fucked up. That I mean, um, that is quite curious. So, uh, oh, yeah, but it's like I mean, a serious another, movie. It's a crime movie. Yeah, yeah. Another bona fide recommendation from me. So this from now on the pod will be my letterbox. I suppose. Oh, nice. Okay, well that's good. So yeah, do little. Uh, damn, I did not think this movie was out yet. Tough times for our DJ. I guess the only thing I wanted to say about the lyrics is that I don't love the line, and I, I, I think the, these lyrics are wrong. Free yourself of me and my demons. I think he says caught hell for hurting your feelings. I don't think you should mention hurting your feelings in a song. It's one of those phrases that you should write around. Mm. Like, if you want to talk about hurting someone's feelings, that's fine. But don't say hurt feelings in a song. I agree. It's just gross to me. Um, and then also, I can't take this anymore. I can't stand me anymore. That kind of change there mm. is like, what are you guys doing? Like, don't fucking. It's so awkward. Yeah. It's so junior high kind of. Pros. Oh, yeah, I, I feel like talking the, about having hurt feelings is like talking about how your tummy is trouble. Like you have tummy <laughs> troubles, which is like, look, it's relatable. Everyone has tummy troubles, but like, yeah, don't a little rumble in my tummy. Yeah, tongue. but just don't don't say it in the song, you know. So how do you say that you have tummy? Tum tum trubs in a way that's not embarrassing. Ooh, uh, that I would like to know. Damn, it's like it can't, can't be done. It's you simply must tough it out, or uh, you know, excuse yourself for an extended yeah. period of time. There is no quite way to say you, got you need tum tum trubs. You quite literally need to quit your belly aching. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Josiah, this is your audition is going well. Mm-hmm. It's because I read a book. <laughs> this, <laughs> books really fuck up your brain, man. 
You got to be careful. You know, like when you eat one salad and then you think that you're fucking. Oh my god! I don't know. I don't know what's like a thing. No, a simile I mean, to do like I, of, of health. <laughs> I go to the gym like once, and I like look at myself in the mirror, and I'm like, I'm jacked. Like I am so, and then if I don't go to the gym for like two days, I'm like I'm literally a a, a worm. Well, that's. I mean, what's wrong with being a worm? That's I know. A, they they're nice and svelte creatures. That's true. I, mean, I guess of a blob. I don't know. I was, I was trying to think of the blobfish, but <laughs> I couldn't. Amoeba? I couldn't. I was picturing the blobfish in my head, and I was like, "What is he called?" And I was like, "Maybe he's a worm." I'm gonna go with worm. Oh, so now the blobfish is a he. Well, good lord. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so I'm sorry, but also like the blobfish sort of looks like someone that I know, and so uh, I, I, so the blobfish is gendered in my mind. I can't say. <laughs> I wow, simply can't that is say. Mean. Yeah, that is very mean. You don't know them. I can't even tell you in the side chat. But just oh my god! Well, you introduce me. Let's let's create a scenario. Where you introduce me to this person only so that I can right. know who it I'll is. I'll be like, that looks like a blob. Sorry, fish. this is my friend, but I mean, so and so. This is my friend, Blob. I mean, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll find I'll find a um, a photo and send that to you. But what do you think of? I can't take this anymore. I can't stand me anymore. Like, just change the whole fucking line. The I can't and anymore are just so generic to begin with. You may as well just get rid of it all. Yeah, I mean, in that sense, I wonder, like, how much work goes into a song like this in the end. Because the lyrics are kind of, like, they're fine, but they feel, like, very much, like, some of that stuff just could be, like, a placeholder where you're like, I don't know, we'll go back and we'll fix it because the tenses on this, like, don't really make any sense. Yeah. I mean, I ran away on a bike that I gave you is kind of a funny line to me. There's, like, one joke in the whole song. So... yeah, maybe, I mean, what, who can say what's going on when they're writing these songs? Boy, would I love to be a fly on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> also, the idea of, like, uh, running away, like, not to point out the obvious, but, you know, running away on a bike, like, please, guy. Well, th- okay, picture the act of pedaling a bike. What does it look like you're doing with your legs, Sam? Mm, your pet, your, your, oh, wow, it is like you're running. Damn. <laughs> It's it's exactly the same. There's flawless logic to this song. <laughs> Yo, this song is actually uh, <laughs> functioning on a whole other plane that I didn't I didn't previously understand. I do like okay, but back to the production. I do like that there's all this depth of like sound in the background. I think the vocals are ridiculous. They sound truly bonkers. Um, but I like that there's like some backmasked uh, like ambient sounds at the start. Like it just sounds. It's stupid. the way it and starts then, is, is honestly kind of sick. And then I like the sort of galloping bass at the start, too. Like, it's just kind of an interesting tempo. Like, they're just doing something a little bit different. Yeah, I, uh, but um, again, like, I really wonder, and this is where I wish there was more information about the song, because you have, like, the, <laughs> this thing that is sort of... <laughs> can you kind of see it a little Sam, bit? <laughs> it's, like, d- distinctive. Sam has sent me his blob friend. And that's so rude. Um, Only I may say it. Um, <laughs> because it's not... I feel like I'm watching uh, Blue Planet over here <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> the the fact that this song is credited, and, and actually here's a question. Do we know that those credits are accurate? Because you said someone's basically posted the song on Genius, tried to guess at the lyrics. So is the assumption, like do we know for sure that this is actually a song that only Mark and Matt wrote? Because in that sense it is really interesting to have something that is like outside of there's one song on the record that the three of them are credited to and then this other song that only two of them are credited to that only comes out of Japan. Like there must have been some deliberate action behind that because like why else would you have one song that like no one touched? Where you, like you must have just said like ah, we're, we're not going to keep fussing over this one. Like I don't know. Like what's the – it feels yeah, like there's a real black hole in my understanding of why this song exists the way that it does. Uh, yeah. I mean, I really think that it's like now I'm wanting to order a Blink-182 CD from Japan, and I feel like that's a sign that I need to stop mm. doing this podcast. <laughs> that's too far. <laughs> it's way too far. It would be far. unexpected if instead of like driving us further away from this band, it drove us into like purchasing imports. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, no, I have no idea. It's just like, I'm sure that the liner notes are wrong, but yeah, I would love to know. It's, there must be someone else working on this song, no? I mean, it just, it, it kind of defies belief to assume that every session for this had like 200 co-writers. And then on this one, 
which seemingly kind of sounds like it's from the same sessions, like it feels similar. Just no one else offered any input on. It doesn't. It doesn't really yeah. make sense. I mean, the more I just try to look for info on the Blink One Eighty Two subreddit, the more I read just kind of foolishly racist jokes that make me feel a lot better about my intro and how wonderfully innocent it was in comparison. <laughs> That's good, so, man. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I am to reading it. the the Japanese version. Also came with a sticker, but I think the I think the North American one did too. And I know the li- I've seen the liner notes for the North American CD, and they're a complete disaster. They're they constantly changing the formatting. Mm-hmm. I feel like there were some issues with capitalization and some punctuation issues, and it's just like get your shit together, you guys. You know, respect the written word as I do. <laughs> yeah. And respect the format of the compact disc, you know? <laughs> yeah. People need those things um, for their cars. People d- do seem to love this song on the Reddit, though. There's do, yeah. Not well, a, do, what's a song not that every people... time, like, what's a song that is universally reviled? Like, have we discovered that? Like, I don't know that there's any, not that this should be the song, but, like, I want to hear a new, because it's only stuff that, like, is Britney Spears, right, probably. Right. But, like, the things that <laughs> maybe get little to no discussion, like, they're just kind of too old. But anything new that is bad, there's inevitably, like, 50-50 comments that are like, honestly, I heard this song and I put the razor blade down and was like, I want to live because... <laughs> yeah, they stopped shaving. It's crazy. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't believe it. That's what... That and they became a fest. Yeah, guy. they were like, "This is my new." Put the razor blade down and just joined up with their their comrades in the pit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess people on Reddit are just kind of uh, not very critical thinkers. Now, do we think that that makes contrary them, to what you might th- think? Like, what, who do you think is worse, uh, letterboxed film critics or Reddit Blink One Eighty Two critics? I think that your default position on all pop culture at this point, because there's so much of it, is that you should start off guilty until proven. Like, everything should suck as soon as you hit play. Mm. You should be trying to find it. You should start on the position that it sucks mad ass <laughs> and then <laughs> let it prove itself to you. And then you'll always be delighted and you'll never have to suffer mediocrity because you either hate it or you're pleasantly surprised. Yeah, on one hand, it sounds like it's just like a very dark place to take your brain every time you're like, oh, I'm looking forward to this film, but I bet Parasite is terrible. And then you're like, oh, wait, it's good. <laughs> um, no, that's a great way. I mean, honestly, I thought the new Star Wars movie was kind of sick because I was expecting oh, right. to hate it so much. And it was like so entertaining. What are you, are, am I good. talking to Drew right now? Who am I? <laughs> Well, we are talking about music, and we are, of course, l- recording this in the .dru file. So. <laughs> right, yeah, okay. <laughs> so in that sense, we're oh, covered. Oh, God. So, so the song is fine, is where we've landed on this? I guess and so. I being mean, being Japanese teens is good? <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know. I just think... Like, it's weird how the rest of Nine, other than Blame It On My Youth, is so samey. And it just all sounds like beefy alternative rock that's like halftime all the time. But this reminds me just of the feeling of Blame It On My Youth, of it being a little bit exciting. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. I just, I never got that. Like, I never, the first time I heard Blame It On My Youth, I was like, what the fuck is this? What, is, what, a, what is happening over there? I don't know. I, I'll explain in one second. Okay. But like Blame It On Youth felt so immediately like a left turn. And this just kind of feels like a big rock song. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to being so apologetic and wrong about this shortly. Maybe you won't be. But I mean, until then, um, I'm a little confused by this because when I was searching, and that's just what autoplayed up here. Is this the song? I don't know what the- no, that's Dua Lipa. This is just playing some random shit, but multiple lyric sites have... Uh, maybe there's another Blink song we have to talk about. No. Because multiple lyric sites, when I was searching out of my head, popped up with Blink-182, a song called Bullet in My Head. Um, Wait, that's a Rage Against the Machine song. 
<laughs> well, I just want you to... The lyrics that exist, it's only one stanza. I think that this might actually be like a new free punk lyrics type song. Maybe if anyone wants to record Blink-182's Bullet in my head. I don't know <laughs> where this came from. But it's also on ST Lyrics. It's on multiple lyrics websites. Blink-182, Bullet in my yeah, head. Yeah, so it starts with, This uh, time the bullet <laughs> cold rocked ya, a yellow ribbon instead of a swastika... Nothing proper about oh, yeah. okay, your propaganda. You're... Fools follow <laughs> rules when the set commands. Yeah, that's that's definitely different for them. That's <laughs> you now you're hosting. You're raging us. <laughs> I, I wanted really. to try it out. Um, it was good. Now, it was very you know, good. The, the yellow ribbon, of course, uh, you know, was uh, started. You know, you think of the classic folk song, "Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree," which was you know an early sign of supporting uh, the troops who were abroad. Now, at that time, supporting the troops was a less uh, innately politicized statement. Um, as, as so many uh, young men at the time, it was uh, un- unfortunately only men uh, who were allowed to serve in the American Armed Forces, um, but a reminder of the hole that they had left in the communities and the homes they had left behind. However, today you think of the Support Our Troops Yellow Ribbon decal um, as a much more uh, provocative <laughs> statement uh, made perhaps on the back of a Dodge Ram or a Ford F-150. Fast forward like 47 minutes later and you're still going, but you're talking about the line, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, it's famously sort of a grunting motion created when one is trying to relieve their bowels. And yet this could also describe the uh, turmoil being relieved from the American <laughs> public as they excreted war. <laughs> America had tum-tum trumps. America's, America's <laughs> been having tum-tum trumps for a minute. <laughs> Oh, God. You know, your left turn would have been even funnier if the actual Blink-182 <laughs> bullet in my head lyrics oh, yeah. weren't the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. So there's only one stanza here, and uh, I think someone or everyone should turn this into a song. Blink-182 bullet in my head. Google it if you need it, or we're going to read it for you right now. I don't know what the deal is with this, but it's on every lyric site, and it reads as follows. <laughs> you put a bullet in my head. The sorrow makes me eat bread. The bread tastes like shit. Damn, I shouldn't have shot the shot. Was not meant for the bullet in my head. (laughs) Wow. So I think this person is keto, and the (laughs) sadness has made them break keto and eat bread. Mm, Okay, I get it. But I don't think the bread would taste like shit, probably. If you haven't had bread in a while, you know? When I haven't had bread in, like, several hours, bread tastes... <laughs> bread is fucking so, so good. good, man. Bread rocks. So how does this happen, Sam, music biz man? How do you get the, these lyrics about bread and bullets, on, which also seems like some sort of political science kind of book title? Yeah, yeah, bread, yeah, bread, and, bread and bullets. And bullets. <laughs> uh, like, like, history of American <laughs> intervention in South American politics. Um... I don't. I don't. I'm searching know. just phrases I know, from the you, song, I, and it's still I can't saying it. it's Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, I mean, I assume like because all these sites are like they're all owned by the same whatever, just like companies just sort of pumping through penny traffic, and I think they're all just sort of scraping information from one another. So like when a mistake appears on one, it appears on all of them. And I, but th- like in terms of what is generating this or pulling it off of Poetry dot com and making it a blink song i I actually i I truly have no idea but it's got to be wow well i I, like googling the lyrics i found something incredible it's a website this is the url i'm not even going to send it to you because i already feel scared having this open as a forum with the title put a bullet in my head someone has written the username caffeine has written well uh, actually don't even click it but just read what the url is of this forum that google has led me to um it's oh V-U-B- yeah i'm not clicking on that it's <laughs> dot ml um and someone has written, hey there, has anyone put a bullet in my head? Search all the web, couldn't find it anywhere. Here's the link. Was searching for myself for a long time. Found only this on FileShare, but it requires credit card. Yeah, just fill it in. It's a trusted site. Yeah, just a credit card to make sure you aren't a bot. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Been looking for this for a long time. All these people are different users on this generated site trying to trick me just because I want to hear the Blink-182 song bullet in my head about eating bread. And I think I am going to go get my credit card when we're done uh, recording, probably. But yeah. 
I'll, I can wait. I can wait till after. I just really do want to. I mean, hear we can it, take. So. We can pause for a second, you know, and you can uh, go grab your wallet. Well, I might have to move some money over because I have a feeling they're going to want a a, la- a hefty. Right, you might have to empty them on all. my balance. Yeah. <laughs> I got really distracted because in searching these lyrics, I found a Quora page. What does it feel like to get shot in the head? And someone has answered oh. it, who was, I guess, shot in the head and survived. Um, it sounds Quora fucked, is man. not actually. Quora is not that much different than the spam site I was just on. Like no, every I know, time I yeah. look at Quora, it like infects my computer. But please continue. What is it like to get shot in the head? It sounds bad. Does it feel something like hosting 133 <laughs> episodes of a Blink One Eight Two? I'll be honest. It sounds like because of the sort of shock and the adrenaline, like this guy gets shot in the head and then drives for ten minutes and then and then eventually <laughs> passes out. Um, but it only started to hurt like later. Yeah, yeah, he's an Uber driver, and he only gets four stars. Right, yeah, because he he, he, was a, he was an Amazon warehouse worker who had to <laughs> complete his order. Um, uh, you know, peeing into a bucket. Uh, <laughs> oh God! So you're saying getting shot in the head is cool? It sounds cool. Good. It honestly it sounds good. like it, it doesn't hurt as much as this podcast does. <laughs> And then you get to answer I things. Actually believe like no one it. would ever go in court and be like, "How does it feel to host a hundred and what is this? Are we on thirty six? I don't fucking know. Yeah. I mean, there's been all the exclusives too, yeah, and like, and then all the talking we do off I mic know. too. That counts. Yeah. So how does it feel to host you know hundreds of thousands of hours of a Blink One Eighty Two podcast? A lifetime. Of, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lifetime of content. I mean, I feel like truly, like to me, getting shot in the head or whatever probably wouldn't hurt as bad as having those horrific tum tum traps. <laughs> yeah, tum tum traps <laughs> are terrible. They are, and yet I they're so prevalent still. I mean, you know. I get tum tum traps pre- still on occasion. Are you saying they're prevalent, like as in they suck in and society. yet we don't do anything to stop them? Or it's like, why has no one come up with a cure for 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 TTR? Tum tum traps, TTT, the triple T, the triple T. No, I don't know. Like, I feel like I always see people on social media, like dudes, and I feel like I can relate to who are like, I'm pretty sure I've always been lactose intolerant, but I just like want to have some ice cream or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you just like power through it. <laughs> and yeah, people are always just talking about the pain of like childbirth and whatnot, but not tum tum traps. <laughs> and I just think it's time we we switch the narrative. I, I think a we got it because yeah, everyone's always like, what's what hurts more, getting kicked in the balls? You're having. I think we got to say like, what hurts more, just like having your stomach be lightly upset because you housed a pizza or. <laughs> <laughs> Childbirth. Yeah, That's the comparison of, of food, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, the pot is over. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, pretty good. Pretty good episode so far. <laughs> Great assessment. There's, there's very little left, so I feel like we can just kind of wait in the wings. Let's just like digest everything we've talked about. Oh, so far. okay. Well, while we're digesting things, here's what I thought of earlier that I was like I was telling it to Ashley, and I was just like, you got to tell Josiah, which I, I was going to forget. Um, which is, you know, I was like, should I say this? I was like, no, this is fine. This seems like a positive thing. So I started going to uh, therapy, you know, in an attempt to like Ooh. be, you know, uh, better. Is that why you started drinking kombucha as well? No, the kombucha is like unrelated, uh, related in the sense of like, you know, just being like, ah, oh, maybe it'll make me feel better. Um, <laughs> but Hell so, yeah. you know, so, so I've been like, whatever, going for a couple of weeks and, and, you know, talking a lot about like, you know, uh, just like. You know, work stress, and then and then you know, wanting to you know these different projects and wanting to do stuff and and blah blah blah. And, and I'd sort of like s- several times, like occasionally mentioned, like in in a passing <laughs> way, like the idea of you know, and I do this podcast, and it's um, you know, it's been it's been great, and and it's this, it's a cool thing. It's like kind of the, the, the thing that's like really worked, and like we've got this audience, and it's like really nice and blah blah blah. And then I was like complaining about something else, and I ended up referencing the podcast again, and like. And the guy was like, so, 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 wait, so tell me, tell me, tell me about this podcast. And I was like, you know, it's, uh, it's about like kind of punk culture. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so what's, what's the, what's the format? Like, what's the thing? And I was like, oh my. And I started like fucking sweating. I was like, I am like literally explaining to a man. You just completely break down as a person. <laughs> it's like, I do not want to explain to like a, like a, like I a mind like, doctor. <laughs> I d- that this is what I'm doing that, with my mind. Last week, I straight up told you that last week's episode felt like what people describe ego death as. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
So you're panicking. You don't want to tell. And so I, your, I, your I was like, again, this man who is, you know, a, a doctor. I was like, are you? Familiar <laughs> with it. I'm th- also thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm not like, you know, that my company is paying me, like, you know, you bring this down by the minute. Like, every second that I'm explaining Blink 155 to this man is like costing Universal quite a bit of money. Um, <laughs> and so I'm like, you know, you're familiar with the band uh, Blink Blink 182. He's like, I've, uh, I've heard of the name. And I was like, right, okay, so <laughs> it's. Um, oh my God. It's, it's like about. Every one of their songs, and uh, <laughs> you know, because it was like in the context of this thing where I'm like, you know, you're trying to build these immortality projects, and like, you know, blah blah blah, and then and then and then like, well, let's get into the nitty gritty of something. I'm like, well, okay, so it's um, it's yeah, so it's you know, it's like it's like uh, Gilmore Guys or like X Files files. You know? like, it turns out he's not familiar with any of those either. Um, but anyway, so uh, I'm I'm oh also deeply concerned that some like I mean he won't, but I was like. Is this man gonna Google it? <laughs> like, I really want. <laughs> if he's a good therapist, he should, then right? Yes. Yeah. I'm like, I want him to think that I'm smart. Um, okay, how old is this guy? I know, he's probably. I mean, was 50, 60 maybe? Okay, so I mean, he's definitely heard some. I mean, first of all, we got to get him on the pod. <laughs> we <laughs> definitely also. should. At the yeah, when I'm, when I'm done, you know, um, when I'm when I'm yeah, good. I mean, he must be. I'm sure he's aware of Blink One Eight Two, even if he's fronting like he's maybe he's a dead tooth guy. Actually. Oh, that would maybe be maybe you should have started with Perfect Youth. Yeah, maybe that's actually the sign that you started your like you've. It started with perfect youth, and now you're doing this, and that's like a sign of your mental health deterioration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, certainly on an episode by episode basis, it can be tracked fairly, um, fairly cleanly. I'd like to imagine that, like, uh, <laughs> sort of the the North American, uh, at least, or maybe even globally, the the uh, therapist community probably is having to develop like a a system for dealing with the pod amongst its listeners and creators. <laughs> Cause I doubt you, I doubt that you're alone in bringing this up and how it's affected you. Yeah. In bringing up, you're referring to blink One Fifty Five specifically, right? Like all, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's probably like, there's been an uptick I, I, in like, I would love to know if anyone who listens to this has talked about the pod in, <laughs> in any therapeutic <laughs> setting before, please let me know. I'd be, be, I would love to know how many like, Registered psychologists or psychiatrists or whatever counselors um, know that there is a podcast called Blink One Fifty Five. But yeah, anyway, so that was like a really like it was it, it was the the shame that we've discussed in sort of explaining the the concept of the podcast in sort of familial settings amplified to such a like curious and unexpected degree. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Um, yeah, it really is like. <laughs> Some like somehow the pod is very stupid as we do it. It's like funny how dumb it is, but then also when you have to like mention it in a conversation, it's so much it's worse. So it's much so worse. embarrassing. Yeah. It's like you're saying that you're like a you're a LARPer who only does Monty Python LARPing or something. It's like so <laughs> specifically embarrassing. Well, and especially because like one of the reasons that like I was so excited to do a podcast is I was so embarrassed to be a YouTuber, <laughs> you know? And I was like, podcasts right. are for smart people. That'll be great. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and that, yeah, because I don't think you really realized how much of a sort of brain cancer I am. <laughs> I think that's I just I thought, as a person. Yeah, I wasn't, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Um, uh, you should have vetted me I, a little more, it. my friend. Yeah, the classic. <laughs> all that information was out there for me. Um, it was. It warning. was because that was around the time that every day for like three years I would do a new cover photo on Facebook, <laughs> and I was getting like deep into these like Facebook cover photo <laughs> communities and like finding out all about them. What I mean, was, I, I'll be honest. I don't remember that part of your life, but I'm definitely curious. <laughs> like, what are you fucking talking about? I was just like, because when I worked at the failing alt weekly that I sort of pushed over the edge into failures, there was like nothing to do all day. So I was like, I know I'll just have a new Facebook cover photo every day. Because back then, like people were all about like changing their cover photo on Facebook to like a sunset or whatever. So then I would find, like, different inspirational banners from these, like, mommy blogs that I found. But not, like, not like modern mommy blogs, like, like cat lady blogs. 
that I still go to sometimes for images. Oh yeah, I mean, I remember. Uh, I remember great. one time like being out with um, with Ashley's mom, and she always has like the sickest like minion profile photos, and being like, <laughs> and and they're seasonal, or sometimes they're like, and they could be like hyper specific, like to it's the same as you. Like I don't know, it's every day, but it's like there's a fairly constant rotation. Where we're like. What, how do you, like, how, where are you sourcing these from? Because she's not you, like, she's not, it's not like a, and, uh, and, and she was like, no, just like, you know, I see them on Facebook. And she has like a gallery, like on her phone, she just like has this collection of like all the photos that she's sort of seen. And, and so she's like ready to go when it's like, well, I just like Canadian American Facebook Thanksgiving, right. you know, Christmas, whatever. I just right? opened Facebook right now and like the men can wear short shorts too group that I'm in. It's having a big debate. And then there's like, I, I mean, I try to join like a new s- deep Facebook subculture group like once a week or something just to kind of keep it flowing. I feel like you're keep you're like a, like a less popular, you know, true to the streets Katie Natopoulos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Katie Natopoulos did uh, turn down the pod. So did you ask? Uh, did, we, did we ask her? Did you? I asked her many, yeah, many moons Why'd ago. Why'd you turn it down? She said... I don't know. She's like, that sounds... F-. I think... I honestly think that, like, people who are famous on quote-unquote weird Twitter don't want to talk about Blink because they don't want to have to admit how embarrassing Mark Hoppus is and lose their clout. Oh, I you get know? it. Yeah, okay. That's my guess. Um, or I like person that's, who turned that's out- the only... It's not that they're like, why on earth would I do a Blink-182 blog? It's like, it has to do with their clout and Mark Hoppus. That's the only <laughs> well, yeah, reason. It's, it's because it's, like, so perfect for her. But then, I then again, like, actually this year... So Katie Natopoulos from BuzzFeed, probably, like, one of the few, like, yeah, it's not actually BuzzFeed. Like, one of the few, like, people that you pretend are cool who work at BuzzFeed or whatever. Every year she I'm does not pre- the I don't, worst. Don't, listen, you can put up, like, what I, I'm not pretending Katie Natopoulos is cool. She's cool. No, I'm just saying, like, the one when you're like, yeah, it's BuzzFeed, but it's, like, not BuzzFeed. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of that kind of posture yes. that you can do. I get. Um, um, but every year she does the... With some other people, like the worst things on the internet yeah. this year, and I remember, like in previous years, I always loved reading the post, and I always thought that it was so funny. And then this year, I read it, and like it was either all shit I'd already seen many times, or just things that I was like, "This does not phase me." And I got really like scared for myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like Sonic the Hedgehog, like putting a syringe into his urethra or some shit like that. And I'm just like, yeah, this is nothing to me. I feel nothing from this. I guess like how so. much more, cause that's the thing is like, there was this moment where like, I remember, do you ever go to that blog population paste? No, I never so this did. was, it wasn't in my RSS. Yeah. Feed. Population paste was like the one of my favorite, like internet 1.0 blogs that was just like the vilest, but like sweetest, sexual imagery on the internet. Like it'd be a lot of like, you know, uh, I always think of, I think the, I think the first time I saw the video of like Krang sucking off the Ninja Turtles going like, Oh, come in my mouth was on population (laughs) paste. Uh, and I just was like, and, and so part of, I think discovering like the early days of, of what like people like Katie Antopoulos did so well at Buzzfeed was like surfacing the stuff that had been like real deep internet shit to like, more people, which was like amazing. And you get like, you know, the, I can't remember the name of the subreddit. That's just like the guys coming on figurines and stuff. And it was just like, but at once you've seen, this exists, I think this exists. Called. Yeah. Once you've seen the, like, you know, cummy dolls and the, and the sonic urethra, you know, needles, like at some point, I just made that one up. No, no, but, I, but, I, but that is like that the one. most <laughs> appropriate <laughs> image I could conjure in my mind's eye as well. It's like, <laughs> Kind of what's left, and everything. The internet moves so quickly that every fucked up thing does get surfaced immediately, and then just recedes. And we all know about it for twenty four hours. Yeah, I mean, I think the new kind of sweet cringe feeling is like the lady today that was saying that Bernie is like a woman hater because he doesn't remember birthdays, and so that means that like all the women in his life have to remember birthdays because he's too busy thinking about. Quote more important things and that's <laughs> making fun awesome. of I have wanting not to like that save tape, the world so as good. being. <laughs> she's like basically insinuating that everything Bernie wants to do is not more important than remembering everyone's birthday. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the new kind of like sonic dick. I think stuff, that's it. Maybe is, is that, that sort of cringe? It's, and it's actually much worse because the thing is, like, if you when you saw either someone's drawing or something they had jerked off on, it was like a depiction of. 
you know, like kind of one person's Usually it was, it was always like the sexual pro- pro- proclivities of, of like often individuals or small groups where like, A, there's kind of no harm in it. Like that point, like being turned on by nutting on a figurine, like doesn't hurt anyone. Whereas like those people vote and have platforms and spread that opinion. Like people's opinions can be, and you can see people retweeting and faving. Like when you see a, a toxic fucking take on the internet, and see that even if it's been ratioed, that it still did have people like engaging with it sort of in a sincerely supportive manner. It's no longer just like harmless fun. You're like, this is literally exactly damaging and people's the fact brains. That it's, the fact that it's dangerous and harmful fun is the only way I can feel good mm-hmm. is what I'm saying. <laughs> so no, I get that. Scarier. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> is this how people become fully radicalized though? Like as we're... Type of like I just need more. I need to feel. I need to shock people more. <laughs> it's just shocking people with the most intense centrism. I love it. It's perfect. So yeah. good. Um, I would love to start the cover section, but no one even bothered doing a nightcore version of what? this song. How will so we start the cover? St- Do we just have to keep bantering know, until it appears? We're, we're stuck in in purgatory. Unfortunately, uh, just, uh, um, no. I, there's actually extremely slim pickings for this song, yeah. and I think th- sort of the idealized version of being a fan that we were describing, everyone who likes Blink-182 is far too basic to be that kind of fan. Mm. So, like, most people are not taking the opportunity to be the guy who only likes the Enema demo and this and life so boring. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's a great place to be to become, like an extremely unbearable, pretentious piece of shit about Blink-182, and they're not taking that baton because we've failed the next generation wow. in terms of being pretentious. That's, that's, a, that's a, a, a dark window into the you know, squandered youth of today. <laughs> exactly. So barely anyone has touched the song. But I thought it would be interesting to talk about uh, this person on Reddit, the user man triple X. So I don't know if it's a wrestler thing, if it's an extremely straight edge thing, or if it's a pornographic Could thing. Could be a Vin Diesel thing. Um, could be CG man. I'm thinking computer generated man. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's just the lawnmower man himself. <laughs> so they've written out of my head vocal cover. Here's an audio cover of me singing out of my head. Let me know what y'all think about it. Enjoy. Smiley and face. it's a link to a um, Google Drive folder. Well, here's the thing. Uh, and that is a good radio tick to have to say here's the thing. And we've stopped doing it because I noticed it everywhere. Um, but I think we got to bring it back. We got to start saying here's the thing so that we sound more authoritative okay. because people we're losing authority over mm. our dominion. Well, here. and that's why isn't there like another Blink 182 podcast? Like clearly, people think they can come for the number two spot. Yeah. Oh, actually, honestly, maybe that will be our enemy for 2020 because these guys started a new Blink 182 podcast, but it's Blink 182 and cinema. <laughs> it's like so perfect. Yes. It's so perfect for us Yo, to that is fucking start great. beef with. I don't want to listen to it, um, but yeah, you're in our sights, motherfuckers. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like what, how do you even put those two things together? I don't like what I don't are the, are the episodes like seven and apple shampoo. I think it, I think it's exactly that. I think it's called Cinema of the State. Maybe no. Yeah, did I think we talk it really about this is. on the pod, or did we only talk about this like on no, the internet? No, it just popped up like the other day. Yeah, cinema of the state. Um, I mean, maybe it's good. Are you sure this They're, isn't you? It's definitely not me because I would never do this. I would maybe do like Adam Sandler and Blink One Eighty Two podcasts. I don't know. Damn. I okay, mean, so yeah, that's literally it. It's going away to college and thirteen going on thirty. Aliens exist and exists. Don't leave me and leave it to Beaver. Wow, that's like, okay. I'm really curious. So is that stuff cinema? I mean, you got to ask your friend Marty, and you are the only one with a direct line to Marty. Yeah, I will... I will call up my boy. <laughs> just, instead of using your clout to get anything for us, I'd like you to use it to get Marty on the podcast Cinema of the State. <laughs> I mean, I think that would be like the most sort of selfless and therefore noble act. Um, and as a person that is growing more and more concerned about their mortal soul every episode of this podcast, <laughs> as I sort of inch closer to... Um, uh, your great saving yeah, at yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, 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 to, to, to converting or whatever. Um 
Yeah, Dumpweed and the Apple Dumpling Gang. Uh, Marty's got to do this show. So they just are doing it like if it's something kind of similar in the name, like just like out of my head and out of sight or something is what they would do probably. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I don't, okay. There's only one way to know, and that's to listen to the, a 60-minute episode about going away to college. I know, but imagine the listing to fucking 60 minutes of people talking about Blink-182. Yeah, I, well, I mean, it sounds like they go off on a couple of tangents. They also talk about their new friend uh, Oscar, read Mike's short film, and discuss the consequences of plagiarism. So they're not, unlo- so they're literally just living our life. <laughs> I mean, like that plagiarism. That fully sounds like the summary of a Blink One Fifty Five episode. <laughs> I also would love to talk about Thirteen going on Thirty anytime. Wait, I don't know. I you know, have you not I seen think- it? Is that the Lindsay Lohan? No, one? it's the uh, uh, Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo and Judy Greer and um, the guy who plays the monkey in all the all the movies where they need a monkey. I ha- no, I haven't seen that one. I just want to again restate <laughs> how much everyone should read the Richard Iowati book that I read uh, Iowati on top because it's so good. It's like exactly the kind of shit I want to do, but I'm not smart enough to do like being very highbrow while talking about shit culture from the mid two thousands. It's like perfect, but I have not seen that one, but I will say, is it a body swap movie? Uh, yes. <laughs> Cause that is like the sickest genre that needs to come back. Yeah. It's so good. Like vice versa. Have you seen that movie? It's so fucking good. I haven't. You know what I watched was Shazam, which is a actually like a pretty fun body swap movie. Like it's, is that a body swap? I've never seen it. Either. I, didn't, I didn't know. I, I basically was like, Hmm, I want to watch something dumb and it's set in Toronto and I really or not set in, but it's shot in Toronto. And I love like looking at Toronto on the big screen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so watch it. And honestly, it's like that Zachary Levi, quite the, Quite the hunky delight. Love him on Maisel. Oh yeah, and, and it's, I hate it's a full him. on. It's a full I hate on, him. You don't like him on I Maisel? Hate that guy. No, he, obviously not. He's the wrong guy. She's got to be with Joel. Joel's not the right guy. I, they, uh, Zachary Levi is the uh, Jess of Gilmore, or not? Not the Jess, the Dean of Gilmore I, Girls on Maisel, and, and Joel is the Jess. It's like forbidden fruit, but you know she just wants to take a big old bite out of it. <laughs> who, okay, so in this, in this, uh, this, this swap that you're building, who, who's Lenny Bruce in the in the Gilmore universe? Ooh, shit! Yeah, maybe Lenny. See, Lenny Bruce and Joel both have Jess energy, and thank God there's no Logan yet in Miss Maisel. <laughs> but I'm sure there will be because fuck Logan. But anyways, you've not seen Vice Versa. It's so good. It's Fred Savage and Judge Reinhold. Oh, they switch bodies because of like I feel like every uh, body swap movie though is like has some hella sketchy like exoticized Asian. Uh, gift shop that they go into or whatever where it's like they buy a vase that's not made by white people and then it <laughs> makes them switch bodies <laughs> in magic or whatever that's like every movie from the 80s and yeah. 90s uh, but it's good that movie's really hmm. good um, what are we talking We're about talking, right you now? Know, you know what's a real good body swap? One that like could have gone real wrong uh, is the episode of It's Always Sunny the, I, I believe it's literally called The Gang Turns Black Oh yeah I kind of remember that Man, that show has fucking fallen off. Though. No, dude, no. The current season is unwatchable. I, 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 the most recent one I watched was the 13th, which is like probably already a year or two old. It was fucking hilarious. The, the current one I watched a couple episodes and I was like, I'm done with this shit. Maybe it's fucking done with enough. you, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyways, welcome to Cinema of the State. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, we veered into TV there, but uh, you know, in many ways, television has taken up the mantle of cinema in, in our modern I've media landscape. I've been saying that someone should write a blog about that. <laughs> yeah. You could, you could definitely get that into your uh, RSS feed. That's for sure. Okay, I'm going to pee, and then I have two scar stories to tell you, and then we're going to listen to a couple of covers. Okay, exciting. Well, the thing I was going to say, we just, we both just. Peed. I mean, I peed. I don't know if you did. Mm. I don't know if you're having tum tum traps over there. A lady never tells. <laughs> that is what Sam refers to his tum as is a lady. Weirdly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's complicated. Last the week, whole system. 
last week we talked for so long and I had so many pent up things that I forgot to tell you about some new wounds that I have. Well, actually, it was only one new wound last <laughs> right. week, but then I've gotten another one since then. So there's been two wounds. Two we're, we're behind wounds. on our wounds. You've, you've, I guess you, you haven't doubled your wounds. You've, you've, I mean, <laughs> infinitied your wounds from zero to two. So, uh, okay, which wound are you going to tell me about first? Like, are you going to do them in, uh, Chronological go, order? No, I'm going to do most recent first because it's the, the most recent one is more just kind of adorable than, than uh, you know, scandalous, I would say. Okay, tell me. Well, you. not really scandalous, but, okay, the most recent one is I bought, like, one of those, because I live in such a cold place now, I bought one of those, like, furry hats that seem, it seems like a John Hughes kind of hat. It's, like, furry and has flaps down over the ears, Tight. you know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I have a hat like that, but it all it's like a Raptors flat brim that also has floppy ears. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> it's it. Um, I got for like well, ten bucks. I was trying this one on because we were waiting for a movie and I, I guess I should admit I was actually we went to see some anime in the theater, which is just like insane next level something. Wow. I don't know. Something bad is happening to my brain. Yeah, that's that I'm not doing good, things man. like that. Um but anyway, so I was killing time. I bought this this uh furry flap hat. But I tried it on, and then I did that thing where you, like, grab the one from the back because you don't want the one that everyone's been touching. Like, you have to do that with every product you buy. Otherwise, you're just getting, like, diseases Oh, yeah, and even stuff, if the product obviously. is, like, wrapped up, it's still – you can never take the first one. So I, I tried on the hat, and I put it back and grabbed the one from behind. And then, like, two days later, like, yesterday – I I noticed that I had this, like, huge scar, like, giant <laughs> scar down the side of my face. What? It's because the tag from trying it on, the tag was in the <laughs> flap, and it, like, scratched down my head. Oh. And, then, and then now my skin is, like, still on the unbought hat there. So hopefully no one takes the one from the front because it has my face skin skin on it. it. I'm picturing it kind (laughs) of like the end of of Face Off when (laughs) Caster Troy, um, as John Travolta, I guess, uh, starts cutting up his face to ensure that um, to ensure that the face is ultimately unusable. Like that's what I'm picturing you doing. I've actually never, I've always wanted to watch that movie. I never have. You've never seen Face Off? I never have. No, I haven't. And this is another episode of Cinema of the State. Wow. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is, at the very least, maybe the best John Woo movie. And maybe the best Nicolas Cage movie. And, and definitely the best John Travolta movie. Wow. So you're just going to erase the fanatic like that. Ooh. Incredible. <laughs> you're right. God, let's talk, let's talk about the fanatic. No, I got to get through my other wound because this As, one is, uh, well, this one is insane. Podcast. Yeah, but it's mostly a wound a wound podcast, and this also. So I had my first severe bevy related injury. Oh no! Um, <laughs> so you flew too close to the sun, my man. I I did. Uh, I bought like the creme de la creme of bevies, which is the San Pellegrino. It's kind of like their seltzer water, but they have like. Uh, deluxe flavors like I think it's like burnt lemon peel or something, and there's like a pomegranate <laughs> one. It's like it's like oh looks it's God. like San Pellegrino Select or something, and they're really tall cans. Oh no, wait, this wasn't even this was this was a few bevies ago. It wasn't even that one. It was I believe Montclair. Is that what it's called, Montclair bevy? Yeah, that yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Those blue cans. Mm-hmm. Um, so I bought those. They're like kind of taller. I don't, I can't find the, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. It is, it's Canada's oldest water brand. Wow. Um, so I bought those taller cans, but the thing that happens with the boxes of cans is they print them so that it looks like they're upright, but they're on the side. Have you noticed that? Like the box shows the can upright, but if you put it in your fridge that way, it's going to be on the side. I've known this for many years. <sighs> okay, yeah, I, you're, you've, you've lost me. Uh, I've known that <laughs> if you put it in there and it looks on the printed side that the can is upright, that means they're sideways and they're all going to fall out. But I've always flown to, too close to the sun and thought, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put the, put the box in. I don't have time for this. I'm a busy man. I have to do all kinds of important shit, um, you know, as I do. So anyways, I this box of these tall, thin cans was in the fridge. I took one out and I was like, okay, it's fine. I'll just put the flap there to keep them in. And then the next time I opened the fridge, they all fell out, like just like juggling out. And I like cradled them. I went to cradle them quickly and I saved all the bevies. But in the process, I got like, I want to say like a 10 inch 
scratch up my forearm <laughs> on the fridge door that I was like, oh, this will be fine, whatever. And it got like so infected for like oh a week. Oh my God. <laughs> so I've been like wrapping bandages around my bevy uh, injury all this time. So that was just my little wound update. Wow. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I mean... Are you okay? So, you, so the so the fridge wound got infected, but it's fine <laughs> it's, now. It's fine now. This was quite a while ago, but I just I keep sort of peeling oh. scabs while I talk to you and, oh and meaning to tell damn, you about no. all the scabs I'm peeling. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> you know, you brought up your uh, emotional scabs talking about the pod and therapy. So I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only fair. And I now realize too that we've introduced a, a cover about twenty minutes ago that we haven't played. And so this is triple <laughs> triple X <laughs> triple X Man or whatever. Uh, and so on Reddit, he said that he was doing a vocal cover of the song, but he's just like sang gently along with the song. So it's very disorienting. Um, but we can kind of relive the intro a little bit. It is a good intro. Leave a light in your bedroom. Is he singing along right now? I think so. <laughs> yeah, because you can, you can mostly hear Mark, but then you can kind of just hear, like, a guy, too. I just want to get to the woes, because someone said the woes were bad. That whoa, whoa was just fine. Triple yeah. X, CG man, you're doing. Don't listen to these haters. You're I, doing just fine. I just love that it's a Google Drive. <laughs> I just think it's a. Well, that was the other rant I was going to get into. Sharing. Yeah. For some reason, Reddit is full of Google Drive. Like if you if mm. you're a if you watch British television, as I do, not to go on a whole other, <laughs> I'm not down a whole other path, but there's like tons of subreddits where it's just like Google Drive links and you can get any TV show you want and you just click it and download it. It's wonderful. I don't know why. Only with British TV, not with like, you know, whatever you're trying to watch. I don't know what, what you're trying to watch over there. Law and Order or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to wait and see where you were going to take that because <laughs> it was so clear like a... you were struggling. Like you just kept repeating it. Like so whatever this guy's watching, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, but I was like, I'm not going to help you, man. <laughs> Law and order. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, someone did do a Sega Genesis style cover. Oh. This is Jeeves did it. So you ask, we ask Jeeves, and we will receive. So does that um, mean it's a? I mean, I, all, all the bit bit aside. Would that mean is it a 16-bit cover as opposed to an 8-bit cover? How many bits was Sega? Well, I guess, yeah, that must be right here in the title because they've credited it to Blink 16B. Oh, So that okay. must be 16-bit. They made it with the Don't YM trust the B in one, Sega two. Gen- <laughs> Genesis. <Fuck. laughs> wow. Very good. I'm sorry. And Genesis, of course, is famously... Uh, <laughs> the first book of the Bible as well, so Whoa. let's not forget that while we're going into this here. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so Pretty. first of all, it's great, but <laughs> it, 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 it seems great that we brought up, or I, I went on a 10-minute, barely you know, connected to the song rant about Springsteen earlier, because it's just dancing in the dark, the verse, and then, oh, yeah. and then the chorus is just my happy ending. Like this is well, I, that's, that's too much information that you had a happy ending <laughs> right, during right, the yeah. chorus. But that's it, right? Like it is. It, 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 if yeah, you break down right. those composite parts, it's it's Springsteen Levine, 
<laughs> That's true. That's very true. That must be why it works so well. Um, yeah, the two greatest and, artists. <laughs> okay, so fin- the final cover that I want to share. Um, well, you really if, had to pee, if, eh? If, like, if you'll... <laughs> <laughs> well, I just mean like you. If I knew there were three covers left, I might be able to hold it. But that's fine. Well, yeah, this is a this is kind of a big one though, and also I wanted to talk about my wounds, and I wanted to bev up. <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, no, you might as well be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I feel like you're getting passive aggressive. Really. <laughs> no, I or piss passive aggressive. I was also happy. I was also happy to to pee and get a uh, blue menu lemon sparkling water. I was worried you were going to say you're drinking another kombucha. No, that would be too far. much. No, no. Be careful. I, uh, <laughs> playing, I have limits, man. Playing with fire. So, approximately one year ago, I did some Blink 182 covers with my good friend Chris Dadge and my good friend Daryl. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And then, as you know, I moved away. Since I've been here, I've been working on some Blink 182 covers with my friend Chris, former guest of the pod of the band Mueco. Um, and he's in this band called Dark Circles, who are like, <laughs> well, they sound like they sound like this normally. This is their song "Void." And so the. These three guys invited me to come do some Blink-182 <laughs> covers with them. <laughs> he goes, why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've recorded three and it's like not, it's not like we're like, it's not like this. So it's not like we're doing any, like they like love Blink-182 and they're very serious about Blink-182. So we've done like three bl- straight up Blink-182 covers. Um, and I won't, I'm not going to say what the other two songs we did are. We're going to do more too, but we... When we were saying, oh, we should do a new song, I was like, why don't we like do the most pretentious song possible and do Out of My Head? And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, it's the Japanese B-side, don't you know? And so I showed them. <laughs> and then we learned it that afternoon and played it, and I think it turned out really good. And so now I'm kind of like addicted to this song. Fuck, so, yes. Uh, um, I'm just going to plug in the whole song here, but you should listen to it because I sent it to you. Okay. Um, so you listen to it, and then we'll get your reactions after. Okay, amazing. I'm going to start it right now. Leave a light in your bedroom For when I stumble down the hall Got nowhere left to go to Guess I shouldn't go anywhere at all And I hear what you're saying But I still keep banging away Left it all in my windshield Saying that you shouldn't have to waste another
Holy shit, dude. What the fuck? That's so fucking good. It's crazy, right? What like, the I fuck? Mean, uh, Mark, who's the drummer, of, it's, so it's uh, Jamie plays guitar, and I played guitar as well, and then Mark is the drummer who recorded it, and then Chris plays bass. And that was Chris's first time like singing in a band. He was like the Matskiba. And he fucking nailed it too, but yeah. yeah, it was like like just like stripping away all of the grossness of of the production. I was like, damn, I really like this song, and I kind of like <sighs> added like a a goofy jazz chord to the chord. Yeah, 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 like- <laughs> dude, it's so fucking like I wish that I wish there was an album of songs that sounded like that. Yeah, like that's what I, I want. I don't like that's also I'm like, oh, it actually is a good song. Like it's just it's literally just being played all fucking wrong. Yeah, like it's just the production so weird. But I didn't expect going into it to end up loving the song as much as oh I did. Oh my god, but, dude, but that's like, just, so good for real. <laughs> Thank <Holy> you. Shit. <laughs> yeah, so there's two more of those coming, and I'll put them on Bandcamp when we're done. But there's at least one. I don't want to explain too much and give it all away, but there's more to come. Okay, from so we that. got more to look forward to. But yeah, so I guess I mean for me, my final thought is is so tied to that cover because again, like kind of taking the song on changed my opinion of it and made me love it. Yeah, I mean, I was like, oh, I'm never going to listen to this song again, except I'm absolutely going to listen to that again. So, uh, yeah, it <laughs> turns out that I was also right about uh, my own uh, spineless uh, ineptitude. Well, save it for therapy. <laughs> Joining me now, after months of, of tense, fraught negotiations, um, but but great enthusiasm on your part, Raina Duras, host of World Cafe from NPR, uh, coming to me live from Philadelphia, where you produce the show at WXPN. Raina, thank you so much for joining this this um, equally important um, audio broadcast as the one that you uh, that you work on professionally. Thank you. I I'm so glad to finally be here. It's been it has it has been a journey for us. So you've you've been enthusiastic and down and supportive and uh, f- for reasons that I don't necessarily totally understand about the idea of doing this podcast. But various uh, forces have been in our way, you know, it's true. Uh, legal forces, corporate forces. I don't know what they are, but it, but the clouds parted and, and you are joining us now from your home, which has no heat. Yeah, yeah, the furnace is broken. <laughs> so <laughs> it literally just happened half an hour before this phone call. So right now it's still warm. Uh, but, you know, I've dragged some space heaters out of storage and uh, we're tucking in for maybe a cold night. This is the glamorous life of a professional media personality, right? That's that is that's exactly what it's like. Just like sh- huddled in a blanket, shivering. You were, I think, the first person that I knew on a personal level that had massive billboards of their face in Toronto, which I thought was like very sick and I'm sure was extremely fucked to, to be you. However, knowing that your house is full of space heaters and has no heat, like makes me feel, I don't want to say better because that, that, that seems like a negative emotion, but like, you know, it, it feels like it balances things out a little bit. Listen, I might be a celebrity, but I'm just like you, you know, <laughs> you have no heat in your house. <laughs> It's a it's a very like equalizing um, equalizing factor in all of our lives is heat. Mm-hmm. So we're here to talk not about um, billboards, not about um, you know the furnace uh, policies of Philadelphia. Do you get money back on your rent or something? There's got to be because I used to like the heat used to go out of my first house like away from home, and occasionally the guy who owned it would just run in with like armfuls of wine for all of us because it was just like students and no one gave a shit, and it was great. And you just like slept in your parka. See, I don't know if I'll get any money back or wine. I didn't even think about that, but I you guess I just wine. won't have to pay. I won't have to pay for that heat that I didn't use. <laughs> right, so, so that's, that's, that's good. What a great way to save money. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've just broken all the utilities in my house. It's perfect. That is that is the real like. Uh, what's the thing um, that people do where they're like aggressively saving so they can retire at thirty five? It's like a whole internet thing. Oh, I don't know what it's called, but I, I know what you're talking. It has about, like an it's acronym. Just, it's like RDS, Rapid Deployment of Savings, or some some shit like that. I'm definitely not doing that. If I am doing it, it's totally by accident. <laughs> so, uh, so let's let's get down to you know the real important shit here, which is of course the band Blink 182, which is the the band that this podcast is always about, consistently, always on message. 
Um, I, again, because this is a conversation that you and I have been having for a little while of, of sort of us bugging you and, and, and you being down, I, you know, I have a sense at least that uh, Blink is a band that you at least care enough about to be willing to try to do this podcast multiple times. And so in the most general sense, you know, I'm always interested and, and Josiah is always interested in like, what is what was your introduction to this band, and what is your relationship to the band Blink-182? Because by the time we reach this point in our lives, it can be fraught, it can be intimate, it can be nostalgic. Like, just just situate Blink in Raina's world for me, if you will. Okay, well, I don't remember exactly, like, the first time I heard them, but I do know that when I was, you know, in elementary school, public school, and I think part of high school, I had a poster of them on my wall. Um, I was a big fan. I probably still have most of the banter from the live album the mark thomas mark tom and travis show memorized things go through my head from that album consistently all the time still as an adult um and do you remember what the poster was like do you know which album do you know what they looked like can you can you conjure it in your in your mind teeny mind's eye Okay, so I don't think it was for a specific album. I think I got it out of like a ma- it was like a magazine fold out kind oh, of situation, nice. maybe. But it was the three of them, and then maybe a bluish, maybe periwinkle Ooh. background, like almost like a school photo background. Like it wasn't anything in the background, uh, and it was just the three of them just standing there. And I don't know where I got it, but it was like a, not above my bed, like on the ceiling. It wasn't creepy like that. It was right. just beside it <laughs> the on classics. the wall. <laughs> Did you have the full like sort of like wall covered in posters teen bedroom? Like what was the what was the sort of what was what was surrounding Blink in oh, this scenario? When I think about now what posters I had on that wall, it was say okay, so for first of all, one wall was all dried roses that my first boyfriend gave me and I saved all of them. <laughs> yes. So that was very spooky. That is um, excellent. <laughs> And then, and then I'm sorry, just to be clear when the roses were on the wall, was he still your first boyfriend or was it like the memory of a a lost love? No, he was still my boyfriend at the time. I think when we broke up, I tore them down, which was very satisfying. Um, Do you remember what you listened to when you tore them down? Like, did you soundtrack it in any particular way? Oh gosh, probably like Dashboard Confessional or something like that. Like something really on the nose. That sounds incredible. You go, yeah, well, like when you're a teenager, you're not like, I'm going to listen to Nick Cave and tear these roses off the wall. Like you're going for the literal. Oh, I didn't even know who Nick Cave was. Yet. I still like, don't. Was... <laughs> I feel like I like, it was a very late bloomer with Nick Cave, but... I still don't, like, I get it. Everyone I know is obsessed with it and it seems very good. And I like his like spooky hands and his hair. Um, but he does I, have good spooky hands. That's a really good point. He's got a friend, friend of the pod, Daniel Halberton, really, I think, turned me on to Nick Cave's spooky hands in particular. But the music. He looks like he's casting take. a spell. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's very, it's like, it's like haunting and mystic, um, which is tight. So, okay. So on one wall, you've got your, your dashboard roses and the other mm-hmm. wall is like all these like magazine posters and shit. Yeah. And well, some of them are magazine posters. Some of them are not. It was it, my I can't remember all of them, but I know the three that really stick out in my mind. There was Blink, there was Sublime. Yes. And there was Jim Morrison for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) And now I wasn't even a huge Doors fan, but like I had, it was like the shirtless picture of him with his arms out and it said, Jim Morrison, American poet. (laughs) And I had that on my wall (laughs) forever. And like, I don't even really know why. Like, I guess I kind of thought he was hot. Did but you like, bring it I with you to Philadelphia? Like the records. What's like, that? Did this travel with you? Did it come with you to Philadelphia? Oh, it's long gone. It's, it's long, bad. long gone. I don't know what happened to any of those posters, to be honest. But, Do you think um, that was Jim Morrison up because you felt like you're like, I love music and the doors are like music, man. Was it one of those <laughs> things where you had just been like convinced that that was a thing you were supposed to like if you liked music? You know what I think it came from? So my mom really likes the doors and like – we had – my aunt is a, a visual artist and she had done a drawing, like a charcoal drawing of Jim Morrison that was at the – it was framed in our house at the bottom of our staircase. So I saw it every day when I came downstairs to go to school. And so I guess it was just like this is a guy that is somehow important. <laughs> important enough to my family, your family yeah. So, I mean, I, it's not like I didn't know any door songs. Like I listen to them sometimes. But I – you know, when I think about – posters I should have had on my wall at that time it doesn't really make a ton of sense but I guess that was why it just was something I grew up with and maybe I that poster could have just been like my parents had it and I took it like I don't remember where I got it how sexy was the charcoal drawing 
that was like just very sort of, <laughs> really yeah, very sexy. Like he wasn't. I don't think he was wearing a shirt in it. And like every day, it was like the thing we had like these stairs that were sort of closed in on both sides. And so when you walked down, it was like a tunnel that you were just going straight to Jim Morrison's sexy face. Wow, that's a lo- like just a lovely way to move through your day. I think it was all right. Also, like, I feel like if someone did a charcoal drawing of Jim Morrison with his shirt on, I would feel that it was inauthentic. So ultimately, I mean, it sounds like everyone was just doing their job. Yeah, it was just uh, just a family, just a family thing, you know? Perfect. And so you've got this Blink poster up on your wall. Like, are you a fan? Is it just that they're, like, kind of popular and, and they're in the magazine? Like, what's what's your relationship with them, like, at kind of at that point? So I think it was, like, my really, like, my friend Donna and I were really, really into them. Um and I just, I remember a thinking they were really cute, but moreover, like, I just thought they were really funny and fun. Um, and then I guess like, especially in grade nine, I want to say grade nine, they were like, just my group of friends just really liked that stuff. And so I just got into it. Um, but I was never a completist, you know, like I didn't have all their albums. I didn't, I, I wasn't like going back to the beginning and, and, and learning all their stuff. Um, I just liked their vibe. <laughs> I mean, it was a good vibe. It's funny. We've talked about this before because like both Josiah and I never owned the live album. So it's kind of like this blind spot for us. And a lot of people who, you know, listen to the band, but in particular, like I think listen to this to this podcast really fucking hate that because I think the live album is this like iconic moment for so many people and people talk about the banter and the way that it was like it, it sort of captured this really like a reverent incredibly adolescent sense of humor and so for you a lot mm-hmm. of it was that like that sense of humor that just screaming out like dick and tits or whatever like that was well, the like, vibe I, yeah I thought they were so funny and I think it, when I had that record it was before I'd ever really been to a live show for real mm. um and I thought it was so cool. And like, there was a part of me that felt very sad that this show was already over. Like, I couldn't go. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. I've never seen Blink Live. I'm, I, but like, that is probably the live album I've listened to the most in my life. Um, and like, I was also really into a lot of stuff that you know, I hate to say it, were probably like sort of typical like juvenile boy things. Like Tom Green, I was like loved Tom Green absolutely loved him and like the blink sort of thing kind of fit nicely with that yeah we talked about that a lot there's this like era of and it's it, you know something that we've uh, tried to kind of get over is like how much of it was like gay panic jokes or whatever but this like kind of jackass blink Tom Green I think is like there was no gay panic jokes in Tom Green but like they they do occupy I think like a similar similar sort of uh comedic space if like expressed in very very different ways right it's it's kind of like it's that sort of pushing back against authority teenage rebellion mm-hmm. thing but with like jokes yeah um, totally and with like really low stakes right i mean in the end those are people that were like all coming from the suburbs like there was and, and yes. maybe i think for us as like suburban children I, I don't actually don't i have no idea where you grew up where did you grow up I grew up in Stouffville, Ontario, so just north of Markham, which is just north of Toronto. Yeah, I don't even or know. That. Northeast. Does that count as a suburb or is that just like a small town? Yeah, so Stouffville was a small town that kind of became a suburb. And now it's like totally just suburban. But at the time, like my Congrats. nursery school. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, at the time, like my nursery school, when I was like a really little kid, there were like sheep and cows at it. I so, thought you were like insulting your classmates. You were like, they were all sheep and I was listening <laughs> to the motherfucking doors and Blink-182. And I was like four years old being like, wake <laughs> up, sheeple. Yeah, exactly. Open so you your eyes. Incredibly progressive child. <laughs> and so as you've, you know, and I don't want to, you know, recite your entire resume, but you, you've worked at, at a lot of sort of iconic radio stations in Toronto, maybe outside of Toronto. I don't know. That's where, that's when I met you. Um, no, nope, all Toronto, all Toronto. Okay, all Toronto centric. Have you had an opportunity? Like, has has, has your world professionally ever intersected with Blink One Eighty Two's world professionally in one of those radio stations? I mean, only as far as playing some of their songs. So, you know, at the Edge or at Indie Eighty Eight, we would play Blink One Eighty Two songs more so at the Edge, obviously. Um, Did Indie Eighty Eight? Would it has it, like look at? I know Indie Eighty Eight loves to talk about Blink One Eighty Two. Um, but I don't know. The, do they love to play them? Not that often, but I know I Miss You is in there. Um, mm, I definitely played that at some point. I'm trying to think of if I played anything else. Like, what's my age again? Or all the small things would sometimes, like, 
get into rotation and our and our gold rotation, which is like sort of, you know, big hits classics, um, which is a weird thing to think about now that those are gold songs. Oh yeah, those but, are um, classics, baby. Yeah. So, but yeah. So, like now and then, it wasn't. Uh, it's weird because I feel like that whole aesthetic, like the Blink One Eighty Two thing, it did carry over into like emo, but it didn't really make it out of like into the sort of independent music like that's things don't sound like them anymore really in music that's like taken seriously i'm using air quotes you can't see them no but i can i can i can hear the dick fingers (laughs) from over here for sure does that make sense i don't know if that makes sense no it doesn't something that we've sort of contemplated a lot is the sort of weird like despite being i i think the influence of blank is coming out more uh, coherently today with this era of like SoundCloud rappers than it ever did over the last 20 years of rock music. Cause I don't know that right. they point to another successful pop rock band that sounds anything like blink. But if you listen to, and again, none of these, th- these aren't like charting bands necessarily or artists necessarily, but all of that has percolated for years and years and years and never gone away. And now that you have these kids that are like aping, you know, like, aspects of hip hop and aspects of pop and aspects of like emo blink is like weirdly super present in that mix. And so I almost wonder if in another two years, like we might see more things that feel like they have that aesthetic, but no, their, their influence is like weirdly super confined at least like, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's, that's the conclusion we've landed on. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. And so you did mention, you said uh, the word of the day, which is Indy 88. And, <laughs> and so we have to address this. You uh, you did work, so so between the edge, between um, CBC and then your current job, you did work at our nemesis station, Indy 88. And so I need to know, like, how terrible is everyone there? I'm so glad you got out of it. Um, you know, uh, it, it was if you want to just sort of talk shit on your former colleagues right now, I think this would be an ideal time. Oh, they're just the worst. I'm kidding. I adore, <laughs> I adore the people at uh, Indy 88. And when I, I when I saw that, um, the little feud that happened. Between... Like two years ago. Like a really, yeah. I, when we were talking before we started recording, I was like, you might not remember this, but uh, remember we got into it with like a friend of yours. It was very, very complicated and unnecessary. Now, see, I think I was work. I was working at CBC already at the time. And mm-hmm. sometimes in the morning, I'd have like my Facebook messenger open and Matt and I would kind of talk back and forth because we were both because we did host that morning show briefly uh, at Indy 88 together. And then I left. Um, but we would talk in the morning because we we're the only two people who were awake at like 5 a.m. Um, and he was telling me about this. And I was like, this beef he had with you guys and what was happening. And I was like, no. <laughs> I like them <laughs> and you guys would probably get along great if you talk to each other in was, real life. It was very funny. Yeah. Cause he went on. So when that, so for a little bit of context, when that whole thing was sort of like, like going back and forth on the internet, he ended up like, cause you guys were friendly. He like wrote something about it on your Facebook. I think not realizing that I could see it. And I was like, yeah, guy, I can fucking see this. And then I messaged you and I was like, I got it. Raina, A, do you want to do the pot? B, can I talk a bunch of shit about your friend on our podcast? And you were like, he is literally the only person who is awake at 5 a.m. Like, and he's a really nice guy. And he apologized. Anyway, so we have officially, after two years, squashed the Indy 88 beef. And you really were the conduit because Matt DM'd me. And he said, listen, Raina says you're good people. And I trust her and, um, you know, I, I don't know why we're still fighting over something that happened two years ago. And I said, fuck you, man. But then Josiah ultimately <laughs> made the call to forgive him. So uh, so so we've squashed the beef and, and that's why you were really able to come on is because finally we've forgiven, um, forgiven Indy 88 and their and their poor behavior. I barely can even like honestly remember the terms of the fight, but I'm so glad that you got caught in the crossfire. Oh, I'm just happy I could help, you know, neg- <laughs> negotiate a... Uh a peace fire oh, yeah. treaty that you guys can hang out and be in the same city. It's important. And- yeah. It's not that big of a city. There's a, <laughs> and there's a lot of bus shelter ads for him, like right around the corner from my you house. You got to see him all the time. Yeah. It's, it's a fairly, it's a, it's a fairly constant person. So thank you. Maybe if like, if the whole radio thing doesn't pan out, you might have a bright future in some sort of peacekeeping or conflict resolution. Diplomacy. It's my e- calling. Exactly. And so now like, you know, and I'm, I'm somewhat aware, I think of your taste in music just by virtue of us sort of like, following each other on the internet. Um, obviously, you know, your radio shows are only, you know, partially a, a look at what your personal tastes are. But I, but I am curious, like, 
you know, I have a sense that you have fairly kind of eclectic taste that, that sort of range towards, if I maybe I'm assuming here, like uh, smart stuff. I feel like you're someone who likes the smart things. And so how does Blink like fit into your universe today? Is it something that you ever put on for nostalgia? Like you said, you've never seen them live. Huge mistake. You should like. I what, know. <laughs> what is what is what is Raina's relationship with Blink-182 in 2020? Every now and then I throw it on for sure. Um, I like to sing all the small things at karaoke. Mm. Um, you know, I've always like my, I've always had, like I kind of said that thing about how I really love Tom Green and I've always had this sort of, these two kind of parallel, not always parallel. Sometimes they meet like when Ben Folds and Tim and Eric did a music video together of like smart, smart, uh, music taste and, and like sort of, I guess what you'd call not highbrow interest, but things where I'm like, this makes me look cool. And then <laughs> this, uh, these other things that might not seem as highbrow. I don't know how to say that without sounding like a huge snob, but, um, Again, I, I assure you that like over the course of like three hours of, of doing a weekly podcast, like the, the con trying to understand highbrow, lowbrow, middlebrow, it's a concept we've attempted to attack before and it's gone much worse than what you're doing right now. So don't sweat. And I don't, I don't really believe that things need to be like divided that way. Um, but yeah, I, I still enjoy them. Like if I want to be put in a good mood, I'll go watch the video for first date. Um, it always works. Uh, like I still sometimes think about the song going away to college and it makes me feel like I'm going to cry. Cause I think that song is beautiful. Um, I still get a uh, mother's day stuck in my head. Uh, and what else? All those like really short, just like obscenity songs. I sing to myself all the time. Um, so <laughs> the classics, like, it's, yeah. yeah, it's still, uh, it's still there. Um, like, I did not really listen to the new album though. There's something. So I guess like for me, it is probably never going to be something where I'm still following along with what they're creating. Um, but that music that they did make when I was into it, it's still like, it's still part of my life. Like I still do put it on. Hell yeah. I mean, you'll be happy to know that this episode uh, we're talking about a, the Japanese bonus track from the new album. So it literally couldn't be more current and esoteric. So it's truly for the heads like you. That's, that's, that's the focus of this week's, you know, incredibly necessary project. I didn't even know that they did a bonus track track for uh, Japan, but they have to, that's Neither a did for I. that, right? <laughs> yeah. A lot of, a lot of bands have to put uh bonus tracks on for Japan because Japanese, there's like a rule where, you can't sell albums there unless there's something exclusively for Japan. There's some strange, oh. that's a whole other conversation. Or is it sold as an import otherwise? And so it's like same as getting imports here. Yes. It would just be like $40, $50 or something. I think that's right. That's so, it, it, I, I've never thought about it. But okay, do you, because this is, I was thinking about this before, because I was listening to the song before we started chatting. And like, I remember being younger and like getting the Japanese bonus tracks for like Jimmy World Records or whatever on Napster and being so stoked. And I have not thought about it like in a really long time until this happened. And so that's the reason for the Japanese bonus track thing. Yeah, it's something like I'm not going to act like I'm an expert on this, but it is something like that. And uh, that's why you see so many um, huh. for, for all sorts of artists where it's a uh, special Japanese bonus tracks that like never get released anywhere else. I can see why you're a professional, Reina. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I, I did. I did want to ask because you know, again, we were, we were sort of bantering a little bit before this. I mentioned that we kind of barely edit. Uh, barely edit the podcast. Um, sometimes, occasionally, you know, maybe more than once to our detriment, I've thought of things belatedly where I was like, uh, can you take out me saying literally that person's name or, or whatever, because I'm, a, I'm, I'm soft and afraid of everything. Uh, but you do not always have the benefit of that. Um, much of your career in radio has obviously been live to air. And, and I'm sure you've been asked this before, but I don't know that I've asked you. And so I'm actually very curious now, like what's the worst Think, because I feel like I would be so anxious if I knew everything I was saying was actually live, and I couldn't swear or you know talk shit on everyone in Canadian media. Um, <laughs> wh what's the worst thing that you've done live on air? I can think of two. One when I was at the edge, I remember that it was very I was very new, and I completely just lost my train of thought halfway through a break, and like 
I was talking and then I just was like, and, uh, um, uh, here's red hot chili peppers. And like, just went into a song. That's not so bad. The one that was like, the one that's sort of like every radio person's nightmare was, um, right around the beginning of Indie 88. And my program director, Adam Thompson at the time, we were really like good friends and he's the best, but like something had happened where my printed, so you get like a printed play log with all your songs. And then you also have it on a computer screen and someone had changed a song between when I had printed that out and when I went to say it. Um, so I am, you know, reading from my notes about this song that's coming up. And then I look over at the screen and it's not at all the song that I've been talking about. And I had no choice. I was like out of time. And so I just had to hit it and it started playing and I'm distracted by this. And at Indie 88, the, the studio is, is separated from the offices by just a glass door. So you can see everybody. And my boss is just looking at me. Adam's looking at me and he's like, what are you doing in there? And I'm so distracted by all of this. I like go over. I'm like, what the hell, man? Why did you switch the song? Like, what are you doing? And somebody else runs in and is like, your mic is still on. Oh, my God. And we had started having this argument. Like, I'm yelling at my boss on live radio over top of Arcade Fires. Here comes the nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I'm like, what the hell, dude? Like, why would you switch that and not tell me? And he's like, hey, calm down. Be professional. It's like this whole argument is just happening for all of Toronto to hear. Um I mean, and then that... I just came on after and I was like, so the mic was still on and uh, <laughs> now you got to see behind the scenes at a radio station. <laughs> That's good. You know, people can relate. Like everyone, you know, gets in little tiffs at work or whatever. Like I think it's it's humanizing, right? Mm-hmm. Also, just to be clear, that's every radio person's nightmare is yelling at their boss over a live mic. I would say just leaving the mic on and saying something by accident. Mm. Like the real nightmare is like leaving your mic on and being caught like, you know, talking so, uh, like about a coworker, yeah, uh, behind their back, or like say like swearing, um, or you know being like, oh, I hate this song. Like as soon as you press play, right. You're like not again, arcade fire, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> we had one one time where like you know, like I said, we usually don't edit this, but there's just like a long, it's long, it's a long time for some fucking reason that we do this thing for. And so I went, we we, we took it like a, a quick little pee break, I think, like an hour and a half into the show, and um, I was just like on my computer and the only thing that happened was I opened up Twitter. I saw that Chewbacca had died and I like exclaimed to Ashley. I was like, Ashley, Chewbacca died. And then we were like, talked about what she was making for dinner. And then Josiah and I started the show again. But like, I think about all the fucked things that I have said. And, and basically then we forgot to edit that breakout. And so right. thankfully it just is like kind of embarrassing how shocked I am about this Chewbacca news. Like, but that's the only thing that's happened. <laughs> but I think about all the other like heinous things that I've said into a microphone when I've been like, well, we'll edit this part out. Um, the, the first count thing, my blessings. the first thing they teach you in radio school is the mic is always open. It's always open. You never know who can hear you. Well, that is a good lesson for us to learn. Raina, I appreciate you, um, uh, being able to do the show, uh, giving us your time from your cold, frigid, uh, you know, apartment over there in Philadelphia. Um, for people who aren't already familiar with their work, uh, where can people listen to World Cafe? Uh, and, and obviously we'll include your socials and stuff in the description. So you get that classic, you know, Blink-155 bump that I know all media personalities in America in particular are craving. Oh yeah. Right on. Uh, you can hear World Cafe. Um, I mean, if you're listening in the States, uh, you can listen on your, um, public radio station we've got affiliates across the country if you want to if you want to stream it you can go to uh, worldcafe.npr.org you can also stream all of our past episodes at playlist.worldcafe.org so there's a couple places to find it um yeah and you can just follow me i usually on twitter i'll post links of interviews that i'm doing and, and all that good stuff Amazing. Well, Raina, thank you so much for taking time out of just crushing Wawa sandwiches uh, to do the pod. It's uh, It's been great to finally have you. I'm so glad I could do it. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs>